any thoughts on Harry and Megan Stardust? No, I really, I just stay out of it. No. You stay out. You don't follow the royal family. Uh, uh, yeah, it's, I, I just don't. I, it's not super important to me. So. What about you, Richard Spencer? Just joined the panel. I didn't expect that we'd be talking about the British royal family right off, but or at all, really. Uh, but what do you think about the British royal family, Richard? Welcome to the show, by the way. Uh, thank you. Wow, I'm not prepared to discuss. <laughs> uh, well, love them and oh, you don't love have them to. in theory, hate them in practice. Maybe that's my. Take. All right, there we go. Uh, now <laughs> the panel's starting to take shape. Uh, Alt hype's going to jump in in like 45 minutes, so uh, we're we're mixing it up a little bit. We're going to talk about Ukraine and Russia, of course, uh, because that's the topic of the debate tonight. So that's going to be one of the topics uh, that we hit. Uh, now, what about this? Hold on. Uh, Anonymous sent three dollars. Call it versus Spencer and Street Fighter LFG. Oh, you do you play Street Fighter? <laughs> I don't know that uh, Richard plays Street Fighter. Anonymous sent. $3. I did when I was in middle school. school. Oh, really? Yeah. Friends, have they met before? Mark, and, yeah, I don't think we've ever met in person, unless I'm wrong. But we haven't met, met in person many times. No. We used yeah. to be politically aligned, but then Richard started making a uh, globo homo centrist cringe takes. And from that point onwards, people in the nationalist movement kind of turned away from him. Uh oh. Mm. Now, wait. Uh, now, how what would is you globo homo? <laughs> Globalized, homogenized. Oh, I thought you meant homosexual. That what, that's what it means. I <laughs> 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 All right. Now, now hold on. I'll, uh, Words I'll, like I'll play this in just a second. I'll go back to all the super chats. Now, how would you describe it, Richard? Of course, you do. You are familiar with each other. Uh, she might not be aware. But... Yes. Well, how would I describe Globo well, Homo? Well, yeah, that or, or what he said about what you about or your, your relationship dynamic. Is there something here I don't know about? <laughs> I have no problem with Mark. <laughs> no, I, I look, it's, I used yeah. to, I, I'm, I'll lay my cards on the deck. I used to really admire Richard. I was a massive supporter of Richard. I used to have him on my show regularly. But of late, Richard seems to have drank the Kool Aid and has been making sort of pretty cringeworthy, uh, borderline libtard takes. He is now a supporter of whatever cause of the month is. He's now had his uh, three jabs. He supports the Ukraine. He's got a big NATO flag on his wall. You know, he supports Biden, supports Macron. And I believe that Richard is basically just a contrarian who likes to say anything at any given time to annoy the people around him that are listening to him. And because the general public are no longer listening, he's kind of given up on white nationalist talking points and is hell bent on annoying white nationalists by making centrist or really cringy um, liberal points that make no actual sense to annoy the limited people still listening to him. I think it's very unfortunate because at one time, Richard was somebody held in extremely high regard. Mark, what do you think is the most cringe take that you've heard out of Richard? Um, <laughs> probably when he had like multiple jabs. I think, he, I think he just had his multiple jabs and he'd got one of the little yeah. stickers on saying, I'm proud to be jabbed. That was... Oh, that was I've, I've, uh, oh, okay. I have been vaccinated. Now, I have not been boosted. I also... Um, had a bout of coronavirus, but no, I, I absolutely support getting vaccinated. Okay. I think do you, do, no, do you support getting vaccinated? Do you, do you support and I got the vaccinated. COVID yeah. jabs? You support the COVID what? jabs? Yes. Even absolutely. though they're not vaccinations. Okay, Richard. How are they not vaccinations? They're not okay. vaccinations because vaccinations create an immune response that prevent you from ever being symptomatic or getting the disease again. So when you've had chicken pox, you have an immune, immune reaction. You never get it again. You can take all three of the COVID jabs, still get COVID, still be symptomatic, still pass it on. That is not a vaccination by definition. Henceforth, post these jabs, the World Health Organization have changed the definition of vaccination to meet what these new jabs do to you, which aren't traditional what you're doing, Mark, What you're doing, Mark, is putting it, putting the vaccine on a pedestal in order to knock it off it. So you're basically... No, no. Oh, it's a definition. It's like me saying... Let me... Let me, let me, let me okay, sorry, yeah. Okay. Um, a, a vaccine is, as you describe it, a way of creating an immune response that will protect you from the disease. And it's not as effective as catching it, um, you know, in the wild. But that is what a vaccine now is, is. Are these vaccines absolutely perfect? 
in terms of stopping contagion, no. Uh, they actually have reduced contagion, uh, but no, they are not. This is an um, incredible virus that we were up against that killed a million Americans. And I don't know how many million, where are we now? Seven, eight, nine million around the world. This was a once in a century pandemic, very similar to the Spanish flu, which was absolutely devastating a hundred years ago. Um, so the vaccines were extremely effective in preventing hospitalizations um, and death, particularly to the people who are most vulnerable. Now me, I work out all the time. I'm in my uh, I'm in my mid forties now. Um, I was probably not going to die of this thing, um, but a and again I did actually catch it at one point, and my symptoms were very mild. I just kind of was in a funk for a month or so. Um, but the idea that the vaccines weren't quite successful in protecting vulnerable people from hospitalization and death is just absurd. I mean, uh, no, I, I don't know what to say. There's no data that would possibly indicate that. Now, you can say, oh, they, they lied to us because they said it was going to be a panacea or a quick fix. Fair enough. I mean, the messaging on this was, was terrible. But again, that is to pursue a, a rhetoric where you put someone on a pedestal in order to knock him off it. It's like saying, oh, you know, Babe Ruth. Well, I heard he was the greatest baseball player of all time. But look at all these strikeouts. You know, it's not it's it's not serious. You have to look at how was Babe Ruth as a baseball player, and he was actually quite good. Hello, okay, Hi, for joining us. So. Well, let me I'll counter you what you're saying. I'll counter what you're saying. There is data in the UK. This was all calculated. Those under the age of sixty who had no underlying health conditions were about as likely to die of COVID as they were of dying in a road traffic accident. The average age of people who died of COVID in the UK was 83. The average life expectancy in the UK is 82. So on average, people who were dying of this were much older than um, 60. They were people with underlying health conditions. They were the morbidly obese. They sure. were people who were diabetic. Yet this jab was largely untested and didn't do what it said on the tin and was pushed upon the population, children as young as, I believe in the UK, it went as young as 12, who absolutely had no need to get it. For them, it would be like a mild case of the flu. This was largely about power and profit. It was about making huge amounts of money for people who took on government contracts. It was about making huge amounts of money for Pfizer, Moderna, big pharmaceutical companies. And it was a massive power grab for the government. And the government also benefited financially because in the UK, it is now emerging that all these massive medical deals that went through on behalf of the government who said, we need to fit out these giant Nightingale hospitals. They built all these giant hospitals for all these people who are going to be needing uh, care, all these people who are going to be dying. Those hospitals never took in a single patient. It was all nonsense. Hospital wards were, in fact, empty and at the time all this was happening the people getting these contracts were all in some way connected to the government so what you're seeing here is something that yeah, would have been probably a bad flu season was blown out of proportion and was used so politicians could grab power and a small clique of people who were already super rich could enrich themselves further and you went along with that and i think you went along a with that bad flu how much season people yeah, I, I did. Not, I don't do these things to annoy you all. I mean, I'll, I'll lay my cards on the table before I ask you a couple of questions. Um, I do not think that the far right of the national nationalist movement is going anywhere. And I do not think worse than that, because that that's, you know, look, am I going anywhere? Good question. Worse than that is that the nationalist movement and far right cannot learn. And they, you call me a contrarian, fine, maybe there's some truth to that. The nationalist movement will endlessly be contrary to whatever the current thing is, and they won't think through it. So they, whatever you, they see some liberal hey, on Twitter put up you know, in their uh, profile picture. They will rage against it. And so they raged against COVID, which was an extremely real once in a century pandemic. 
period, end of statement. A bad, a bad flu season in the United States with 300, 330 million people is 60,000 deaths. Maybe a really horrible flu season might be 75,000. All right. Over a two-year period, we had a million. A bad flu season is not 500,000 deaths. But I guess my question for you would be, do you think there should be any public health response? Because all of those things, those criticisms that you put forward are valid in the sense of people who are connected to the government are going to make money. The government's taxing you or taking on debt or just printing money and giving it to corporations. I get it. But that criticism could be leveled at literally any program. Every single thing the government does, that is a valid criticism. So do you not believe in the concept of public health? Do you believe okay. that we should have done nothing? Well, firstly, I'm going to, I am going to answer that question, but I want to correct you first because you've made a major, major error in the things you're saying there. In the UK, and I don't know if it's different in America, we seem to be having huge numbers of people dying. You looked then into the statistics and people were saying this many people have died with COVID, not of COVID, but with COVID. And that's a very interesting definition because in the UK, the government was classifying anybody who died within 60 days of testing positive of COVID as a COVID death. So you could get COVID, you could fully recover, you could then go out on a night out, have one too many uh, fruity beverages, run out into the road, get hit by a bus, and you would classify as a COVID death because you were tested positive for COVID within 60 days of dying. And they were also classifying people as COVID deaths who were on palliative care wards. So there were people on palliative care wards who had uh, cancer. I mean, if people don't know what a palliative care ward is, a palliative care ward is a ward where people are placed when they are dying. They're never getting the better. Care, basically, right? Kind of. Yeah, they can only ever be cared for and made more comfortable and life made easier for them before they pass. So they're told, you've got three weeks to live. There's nothing we can do. You're incurable. You're on the palliative care ward. Those people would then get COVID or you know, reportedly get COVID. And what would happen is that would be listed as a COVID death. Now, that is completely disingenuous. And there have actually been cases in the UK, numerous cases, where families have sued um, Public Health England and the NHS because their relatives were wrongly listed as COVID deaths when they were already on palliative care wards. So what we're saying here is you have a massive overestimation of genuine COVID deaths. I'll give you another example. You would see in papers like the Daily Mail, totally healthy 22-year-old woman dies of COVID. And you'd see a picture and she must have weighed about 30 stone. She was basically a whale. It wasn't, she wasn't a perfectly healthy person. It was a massive comorbidity and the comorbidity was retested obesity. I, I get, obesity. That. I get that. So they overdid the statistics. They, there was a big Times article saying in Britain, no one recovers from COVID because at one point, anyone who got COVID and then died afterwards was actually being recorded as a COVID death, then they reduced it to 60 days. Now, the point- well, let, let me respond to this. I would like you to answer my question of whether- I'm going to, but you, you're, you're saying there were all these deaths, and I'm saying the figures- I think were the COVID deaths were underestimated, absolutely. The figures were massively Now, first off, distinctions, distinctions have been made between dying with COVID and COVID. And sometimes that's a difficult decision to make. I would remind you during the Spanish flu pandemic, most people did not die of the Spanish flu. They died of pneumonia because they were basically totally weakened due to catching the Spanish flu. And they were dying of pneumonia, which is often, you know, it's known as um, the old man's best friend or something like that. It kind of puts you out of your misery, as it were. Um, I think COVID deaths were absolutely underestimated because excessive deaths counted on year by year. So this is not looking at the actual causation. It's just simply looking at deaths that you would expect on a kind of actuary, actuary, actuarial, sorry, difficult word to pronounce, actu actuarial basis. And they exceeded what has been reported by the World Health Organization and the CDC. So over a period of time between 2020 and 2021, according to an article in the Times, which is taking CDC data, 
and you know, again, it's an actuary account, um, is that they would have expected some 800,000 deaths. There were over 950,000 deaths. So we're having huge amounts of excessive deaths. And in 2020, there was a significant um, uh, fewer drivers on the road. Traffic accidents kill, I don't know, 50,000 people a year or whatever it is in the United States. Um, and that was starkly reduced. People were staying home. They weren't going doing extreme sports or whatever. So there was a reduction in activity that often leads to death. And there was ex it just, again, brute numbers and increase in actual deaths. That leads me to believe that, uh, if anything, things are underestimated. It's a very, it, it was a real thing. You're not engaging in full-on denial that I've heard elsewhere, to your credit, but you're kind of treating this as if it was just a kind of joke. No, I'm not doing I that. agree. That's very, it's a very hard thing to understand because, you know, as a, you're a healthy guy, I'm a healthy guy. The, the, yeah, we are sure, we're more today. likely to die in a car accident than a COVID. That, that might be true. Um, it seems fair enough. But the fact is, it is, it's difficult to contemplate this because it is not this like black death or measles where there's, you know, 30% death rate in extreme contagion. It's not like that. It's a very subtle disease, but one that over a population can be catastrophic, which it was. Yeah, it's a very, a very uh, mild disease, I believe, for the vast majority of people, not for certain age groups, yes, not for, for people. The vast majority and, of people. But the yeah. fact is, when you are locking down the vast majority of people and administrative, administrating largely untested jabs upon them when they don't need them, jabs that do not give them lasting immunity, but you've got all of these people getting super, super rich from it. You've got the destruction of small businesses, the destruction of local economies, the concentration of all the wealth further in the hands of uh, a tiny minority of the global elite, people who run companies like Amazon, etc., people who are part of these you know, online gigantic companies which are destroying our high streets, destroying uh, local businesses. That's a bad thing. Now, obviously, there does need to be a public health response or something like this. But you said it yourself, this wasn't the Black Death. This wasn't the zombie holocaust. You're not going out into the street and finding bodies piling up. But if you would have watched anything in the mainstream media, you would think that was the case. You would think that you would be walking out of your door, you'd need a special mask on, and there'd be bodies everywhere. The one, is a million people more? not a large enough what, pile what, of bodies? I'm saying you? those numbers. I mean, were flu, what, you needed the flu disappeared. 10 million? The flu disappeared. There wasn't in Britain apparently there wasn't a single flu death when COVID was around. No, because all the flu deaths, which usually amount to about twenty to forty thousand a year, were rolled in with the COVID deaths. So no, the they were. There's a clear reason for that: is that we can actually prevent a lot of flu deaths through hand washing and social distancing, and we just simply don't. Most people who catch the flu go to work or to the bus. It's no, actually no, no. quite social bad. It's something to think about. And we've now become more conscious of it. Social distancing harms people, especially children. It destroys their immunity. If you look into uh, germ-free living, germ-free living, and this is a scientific fact, germ-free living damages the development of any living creature, especially the young, and it damages specifically their neurological development and their immu immunological development. I, I, I don't disagree with you. And it, you've made some good points when it comes to, now granted they're made in retrospect, but you made some good points when it comes to how this was handled. I think I, I would agree with you to a large extent. I think the masking, um, you know, look, I don't, I don't mind wearing a mask when I go, or I don't have to anymore, but when I went to the grocery store, et cetera. But I agree with you. There was a lot of mass theater going on. And I agree with you that some better decisions could have been made about young people. But that we know in retrospect, when in the moment, if I were in charge, I would have done, I would have absolutely locked down the whole country because who knows there was, you're getting information out of China trickling out. It's weird. You can verify it. We might've had a zombie apocalypse on our hands. In, instead, we had a, a disease that was actually very subtle and difficult to handle. But for the first, say, three months, I give the government a complete pass. If I were in charge, I would have absolutely locked down the country because we didn't know the For how long, though? Now, For better how long? decisions could have been made. 
Of course. For how long? It's worth because, talking about them. Because I was concerned about the disease for about two weeks. Then I was on to what was going on. And I'll tell you this. I didn't wear a mask. I refused to wear a mask. And you're better than this, Richard. You know. You well, know damn you're well the a masks... non-conformist then. No, 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 I'm not a obey. non-conformist. What if I'm... I were in charge? Would if I told you to wear a mask, would you do it? Uh, if if there was a genuine threat to our safety that well, was clear and present, that I would wear you are I would not do a what I need official. to do. But the fact is Do you believe in the sovereignty of the state or are you some kind of American libertarian? Our enemies or not. Have the government spent decades doing the worst thing possible for white people, the worst thing possible for people of European descent? You know they have. And when that's a non sequitur. That's a non sequitur. First off, I just to be frank, I don't think they have done the worst thing possible. But I I get your you're you're using rhetoric, I get it. I understand there is a level of incompetency in the government. I understand it's that there are regimes it's in place. It's malice. Well, I was, I was getting there. I under, first off, there is a lot of incompetency, but regardless of ideology. I agree that there is a kind of anti, uh, you know, anti-white regime in terms of affirmative action, hiring, etc. I get that. But... It's a non sequitur to believe that they can't accomplish other things. They can still pick up the trash, even though they, you know, want to promote rainbow diversity, you know, on occasion. They can still actually win wars and be effective that way. Hey, I'm sorry, we're getting it. That's cool. That's cool. <laughs> All right. You're not ready to be live streamed. <laughs> well, look, I'll say this, Richard. I yeah. think the mask wearing, we were told in the UK, do not wear masks. Masks won't make this any better. It's a complete nonsense. It's absolute pageantry. That's what they said That's for about the first that. three or four weeks. That's what the government yes. said for the first because they were, and then they, said, they, were, they were lying to you. They were, Fauci had, must have been reading Plato in his spare time. You then have to they lie said, to the public. you must wear a mask or you will get a fine. And at that point, we all looked at each other and said, this is about proving who yes. is the conformist and who is not. And you could see people wearing the mask because they wanted to conform. And do you know what, Richard? You can still go to supermarkets today and see scared, timid people walking around, around with the mask on, absolutely petrified yes. and refusing to go back to normal. And that is what our governments want. They want beaten down people who will conform to any nonsense that they will say and they wanted a metric of how many people were willing to conform they now know how many people were willing to conform because this experiment proved it admirably and sadly you were one of those conformists which is very disappointing <laughs> maybe let me just let me just i'll, I'll keep speaking not, uh, I, it's not, not he's obviously it's not his fault no, it's, it's, not, I, it's not um he, he doesn't need to be honest. Is that your yeah. boy? Okay. Yeah. Uh, he's oh, you know, it's just some kid that I picked up. Uh, <laughs> <the other day. laughs> I don't know his name yet, but we'll figure out. Um, <laughs> he seems to like me. <laughs> Very funny. <yes. laughs> so, um, okay. Oh, sorry. Didn't mean to interrupt. Yeah, you can jump in, start us. Go ahead and oh, jump in. I yeah. super here. Go ahead. Uh, I just wanted to ask then, since you guys have gotten kind of, have you guys gotten past the COVID stuff? Uh, I'm guessing. Seems like it. Maybe. I Maybe. don't know. Okay. Well, uh, I guess, uh, Richard, what is the most cringe thing that you think Mark believes? Uh, I don't, I don't think Mark is, is too cringe. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I would say, you know, I, I've known about Mark and listened to him for, you know, many years now. Um, and I would agree with quite a bit. Um, I think my general criticism, because I don't want to make it anything personal, my, my general criticism of the right is that due to understandable um, grievances about the government and about liberal journalists and so on, that they fall prey to a certain contrarianism in which they don't ultimately think for themselves, but they make a kind of knee-jerk reaction to anything like, say, Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Well, the New York Times like it, likes it, therefore, or the New York Times hates it, therefore, we love it. COVID, New York Times is for masking, 
we're against it, we're against it, et cetera, et cetera. It's a kind of we are in total opposition and total resistance. Um, I, I don't. I'm cur- I would be curious to learn what he thinks of the recent um, Supreme Court decision that that affects the United States, of course, and not not his country. But there's this genuine contrarianism, this genuine desire to join the resistance, which I do not think is intelligent because it is not thinking for ourselves. And I think basically is leading us to fight all of these endless battles that don't actually affect the things that Mark cares about. And if you are in endless resistance to the system, the system will win. And I am not interested in just being a martyr and taking up every cockamamie cause. I have, I have a friend who joked about this, and I think it might very well be true. If there were an editorial in the New York Times um, that suggested that eating dog shit is bad for your health, I imagine that many nationalists would start eating dog shit for breakfast every morning as some kind of form of resistance and demonstration of their, they're a sovereign individual and they're fighting the system and all the blue hairs are against this. So we must be for it. The fact is we should think for ourselves and we should try to calculate at what all of these things will ultimately lead to. For one thing, Donald Trump, if Donald Trump had become a COVID fascist, uh, he would have won the 2020 election. There's no doubt in my mind. And he did to a certain degree. His major problem was that he, due to his mouth, was associated with all sorts of COVID denial, uh, weird schemes of you know hydrochloroquine or ivermectin, I guess that came a little bit later, and so on. He was on their side, at least rhetorically, and that freaked out a lot of old white people who voted for him in 2016. So you have to calculate, and that's just a you know, purely political take. You have to calculate these things and think about what is ultimately serving our interest. I think a more powerful NATO and a neo-Cold War is actually serving our interest if you will just simply think down the line and not jump on to some, oh, there's some massively corrupt um, you know, quasi evil petro state that's invading its neighbor. We must like them. He's the save. Putin's the savior of Western civilization. He is not. And there are actually some very good things that will come about uh, the current situation we're in. So it's really about a long term calculus and thinking for ourselves, and not just reacting endlessly to what the New York, you know. The New York Times says A, we say B. Blue hair, blue hair SJW says C, we say D. It becomes contrarian and boring, and it is not, not part of a longer-term vision. Um, and again, all of these battles, I, I hate to break the news to you, but you're going to lose all of these battles. Russia is going to lose. This will be a humiliation for Russia. You know it. The COVID okay. stuff. Uh, well, Russia is doing really poorly, and they are facing off against a NATO, which is fully implemented and is going to, at the very least, have a, end up with a divided Ukraine, and half, Western half of which will be in NATO. I mean, I, I don't... I, this don't was, think, I don't think the right is... I so think, why lose? I think, why endlessly lose? What do you mean, why endlessly lose? What you're basically saying is the most ridiculous and retarded argument I've ever heard. What you're saying is, you, we should give up what we stand for so we stand with our enemies because then we win as well. That's not That's winning. That's not what I'm saying. That giving up what you believe in to adopt your enemy's point so when they implement things that you don't want, you can go, yay, we said that too. That isn't I. Winning. I agree. I wanted COVID restrictions. I want a strong NATO and a neo-Cold War. I'll just tell you, that is what I want. I'm not doing this because I'm a coward. What you want is the latest contrarian hot take that's going to make the average nationalist viewer listen to you. And I don't want them listening. (laughs) They don't listen to me. This spiral since Charlottesville. And this sort of cumulated with that 
awful interview you did with that Ellie creature recently where you sort of apologised for this, you had a go at Trump. You keep saying when Trump lost the election because, well, I can finish that sentence for you. Trump lost the election because of massive coordinated electoral fraud that was covered up by the media. Oh, God. I mean, no. See, we're just... I don't believe in any of this nationalist stuff. Can I ask you a question? They, the nationalists you a don't listen question? to me. You're not really giving me much time to address what you're saying. And I'll say this, Richard. Have you ever been to an election count before? An election count? No. No, I have. I mean, I've I, outside of high election. school. I've been to election counts. And as someone who's been to election counts, I have never in my life seen the kind of irregularities that were on show in a widespread number of places, especially in the city areas, that we saw at the last presidential election. And I am not alone. There are entire states that went to the Supreme Court complaining about mass electoral fraud. You can't say none of this happened because this isn't a fringe theory. It's a theory held by the then incumbent who was unseated. It was a theory held by several states. It's a widespread theory because there was clearly mass electoral fraud. It's a wide spread theory among QAnon fans and of course Donald Trump holds it. So I mean, what about Donald what Trump about did better in Detroit than he did when, in 2016? What about do you think do you think Marjorie Taylor Greene was elected by the deep state? Do you think that's what happened? Look, the thing is Richard, that was we in obviously have very different opinions. I am not contrarian to people simply because of their hair color. I'm contrarian to people who have bad ideas. I believe that NATO fomented this war in, in the Ukraine because they want regime change in Russia because Putin isn't exactly on side with all of their ideas. I believe they fomented this war in the Ukraine because they wanted to test many of their new anti-tank weapons, which they are currently using this battleground as a testing site for. That's I believe fine if you believe it. that. That's simply a disagreement that we have. And, and I, I think there's actually... But I believe a powerful what you're Russia, which stands on a more traditional Christian ground and oh opposes God. many of the social democratic degenerate uh, social policies sweeping the West, is a good thing. Because I believe that different uh, competing global powers keep each other in check. And I think the more power that the West has at the moment, the more of a whip hand the crooked and twisted Western liberal democratic system has, the more they use that unopposed power to do terrible things to white people and to replace white people demographically and dispossess them of their lands, their rights, etc. And you supported Biden, but since Biden's come in, he's been a disaster. For whatever no, you think hasn't. of Trump, Biden has been a much bigger disaster than Trump. You, you, you this just sounds like I'm listening to Fox News. It doesn't sound like you're listening to Fox News. So you want all of the... Yeah, this Biden is literally the most, all that Fox Biden News. Biden has the most Jewish cabinet in American history. You want transgender and Trump Jews. didn't? You want transgender Well, let's not get into Jews. this. Trump's daughter was Jewish, wasn't she? <laughs> she's, she, <laughs> she can't be Jewish. Jewish family. <laughs> she had a Jewish family, but she's, she can't be Jewish because she's... She can't convert her. Well, she, she can't that's convert. That's not convert true, to Judaism, actually. But she can't ever become racially a Jew. You can't be transracial. No, but she practices Judaism, though. She, yeah, she may have converted to Judaism. Judaism I is yeah, really I know, race, race, she's not. Race. Yeah, I mean, well, of course it's a race, race because it comes up on DNA tests. Religions don't come up on DNA tests, Richard. That's yes, not. but the DNA test of Ashkenazi Jews is that they are more than 50% European. I mean, it's not, a, it's not a coherent race in the way that, say, Caucasoids or Mongoloids are. Um, Weird, this because is, when you look at them, question. you can actually see <laughs> when you can look at them. Not always. That's words. not always true at all. You know, the fact of the matter is, when you look at things, I mean, you asked, you, you sort of started talking about, did you mention Roe versus Wade, what I think about the latest abortion thing? Sure, I did mention that, yes. Yeah, go, well, I, go. Think, yeah I think the repe repealing Roe versus Wade is a good thing. I don't believe yeah. that there should be abortion <laughs> on demand. I'm not a conservative, as I've told you guys over I, I and think over again on demand divorces uh, responsibility from action and if you divorce responsibility from action you have a nation 
of ill-tempered babies who think they can do what they want without any repercussions. I also think that un unregulated abortion, which you now have, leads to horror stories, which you have in certain US states, of abortion up to the day of birth. Well, when you have abortion up to the day of birth, you have literally the horrific case of babies being killed because any baby the day before its birth is a viable human being that can live without its mother which means you have to deliver that baby and leave it somewhere to die and i am not somebody who thinks that those who wish to deliver living viable children and leave them in a metal container filled with cold water to die of exposure that's disgusting. And the people doing it, we would be better off without them. The world would be better off cleansed of people who do monstrous things such as that. So you want these people who do monstrous things such as that to have more children? I want the people who wish to kill fully viable children that can live free of their mothers and kill them in horrific ways, not to hold any power. And ultimately, I would have them removed from our gene pool. Now, I do okay, believe well, this. I do <laughs> believe abortion does that, by the way. But no, beyond abortion, that, abortion, abortion has been declining since 1980. Uh, abortion it's, kills babies. Well, look, these horror it stories that you're talking about, these are exceedingly when, when rare. When do you think life begins, Mark? Life begins at conception. That's a fact. Yeah, and what is conception? Okay, so are you a Catholic? I'm not a Catholic. Life begins at conception, but... Are you Anglican? I'm Church of England. Life begins well, okay, that's what I at conception. Yeah. And I do believe really there should be reasonable um, there should be reasonable caveats when it comes to abortion. So if it is a case of um, abhorrent conception, such as rape, incest, uh, paedophilia, then yes, I do think abortion should be allowed in those cases. I think if you have a case where the child is going to be heavily disabled. I believe abortion should be allowed in those cases. And I also believe that there's a genuine threat to the mother's life, i.e. carrying the baby to term would kill her or put her at reasonable risk of death for, through generally medical things, not just because she's a loon and, you know, thinks it's going to give her mental health problems or, you know, something like that. What is like conception that. to you? How would you, how would you define that? <laughs> Look, Stardust, I'm not Look, playing the silly game of me yeah, being... Let, let me jump in real quick. You can Google Mark, what conception is. It's when a sperm fertilizes an egg. Mark has a mainstream, because he, he's put in some exceptions there that are pretty significant, particularly... I mean, uh, I think I was, I was looking at statistics last night. I did a broadcast on this. I think 20% of abortions are actually done by married women. So this, it's, it's this strikes me as... Yeah, and sixty percent of sorry, sixty percent of women who seek out abortions already have children. Right. So a lot of these abortions, I th particularly with married women, I, I think they're they're selecting out um, children with Down syndrome and the like. So, Mark, you've got a, a, a mainstream, reasonable perspective on this. That that that's fine. You agree with, I would say, most conservatives. 70% so of the population some, wants... That's what I was saying. I'm not some contrary. That's fine. I that's fine. But I, that doesn't... If I have a know. different perspective, I'm not like evil or I'm doing this I didn't to say you were, I didn't yourself. say you were evil, Richard. Well, I know you didn't you say I'm evil, but you know what I'm saying. You seem to get quite a lot of pleasure out of taking points that I believe... I believe that post-Charlottesville, um, you have somewhat lost your way. And I like you as a person. I've always enjoyed your takes. I've always enjoyed you having a show. I'm not here to have a go at you. But I feel post Charlottesville, you seem to be of somewhat, you know, eclipsed in the scene by um, National Justice Party and by America First. You seem to have lost your way somewhat and you have been marginalized. And I think you are crying out for people to notice you by making takes that are going to raise an eyebrow from people who once used to listen to you and once respected you. And I, I think that's sad because I do think you are an intelligent me man. A number of things, which among other things is that these people on the far right, they are, they have antisocial attitudes. They want to cause terrible scenes, many, not a majority by any means, but a strong m minority it's a fraction, but they make a lot of hay, wanted to go to these events in order to get into fights. And they uh, expected that the consequences would be borne by other people. 
So yes, I have learned some things, which is I don't want to deal with the far right anymore. But, but that is my own very well, assessment. Richard. I'm but sure I, you like, would love to be. It's like to you're mad that I'm left you. No, I no, don't no, want to be mad. involved in the I'm far saying, right. No, I'm saying you're mad because you haven't achieved what people like Nick Fuentes has. You'd love to be holding a conference with a thousand plus people in attendance speaking to them all because that's where you flourish. When you were doing that through your organization, you flourished as a person. Your speeches were excellent. The media wanted to talk to you. And that's where you as a man flourish, you blossom. And since you have been somewhat sidelined, I feel uh, Mark, made. I'm going to be just really honest with you, okay? Nick Fuentes is just a little tedious unbearable person okay njp is stupid and ugly all right there it is i don't want to have anything to do with the far right you guys these guys eclipse me because this is the kind of crap that you guys like all right one no, no, of the no, reasons Richard, why i'm not a member of the way. far right because you all have bad taste I don't but know what to tell you. You did that well and you loved it. You had this wonderful no, I, conference. Because I had wanted people. this to go further. None of these things can go beyond like weird cringe posting and what is basically WN 1.0 nonsense. But they have it gone won't further. go beyond that. It will not. Just take my word for it. There is a but reason why I don't want to be involved with it. But the National well, Justice Nick Party really is holding far. meetings he went with all the way to the Capitol. You're right. The America <laughs> First is holding meetings with a thousand people. And you once held, when you were running um, Radix, when you were running the National Policy Institute, you were having incredible events. You were a wonderful speaker. And I can't you were do those right. things for two reasons. The first is extreme deplatforming that I faced and I faced to a very large extent, say four years ago, more than most others. The other reason is that the movement does not want me. The movement wants other people. That's fine. I'm okay but, with but Richard, it. I'm I've not seen mad. your interview with that Ellie where you were basically begging for her forgiveness. And it was terrible because you were saying if the whole movement was based around you, the movement would be better off. And it sounded awful. Yes. And do you it's know what, Richard? Do you know problem. what, Richard? Do you know what, Richard? You would have been better going into that meeting with that odd faced, silly little woman like the old Richard Spencer and saying, you know what? I'm right. I'm right. People of European descent have a right to exist. And odd little liberal journalists like you, you are the problem. I'm not going to do what you want me to no, do, Mark. Why don't you go and do that interview? Do. I was advice. very pleased with that interview. Well, I, I, was I and many of very others pleased. Watched. And it was the downfall of someone who wants did great things now hold on let, now explain the interview I, for those who don't know what 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 happened with the interview richard i because I, I don't know that everybody knows. you did an interview with cnn oh, whoops sorry um, well th there were some i mean i did a very long interview i think they took the stuff that was more acrimonious oh, yeah i was i was getting a bit angry with ellie in the sense that it was this like i was fairly and rather honestly talking about the serious problems with the alt-right and there were serious problems the alt-right was going to end up in a bad situation one way or another and like there there were a lot of bad people in that movement there are a lot of bad people that are going to make any type of event very bad i mean charlottesville has been massively eclipsed by what a few people in the alt right, but it was actually mostly normies hooked on QAnon, did on January sixth. Um, it these things end up in a situation. I can kind of imagine. I've actually got to go. Unfortunately, I have another stream. I'm doing. I can I can almost imagine a kind of multiverse. Like every, these, you see this in comic book movies now. Multiverse. So there's like another you out there. I can imagine another Richard Spencer who did exactly what Mark Collette wants. That Richard Spencer will probably be in jail and would be 
you know, involved in January 6th and will be yelling hail Trump in 2020 um, and basically utterly destroying his life. No, Richard, I don't that Richard want Spencer, to be that person. I, that Richard Spencer would have been a highly respected man speaking to hundreds of people <laughs> at conferences, being part of a community, part of a movement. And instead, the Richard Spencer we have in this universe is one who groveled to some strange faced liberal journalist who basically. I don't think most people saw that interview as grovel. Western society Mark, don't on you its think head. that's a little unfair, though? Because um, you're what, asking. Was she strange faced or that he groveled? No, no, no. You're asking him to basically uh, sacrifice his life and his livelihood. Uh, for that's this. what we all must do. If you have a righteous cause, you fight for I'm that no righteous martyr. cause because it's better to live for a day as a lion. Then, then go be a me. Go be me, sheep. Mark. Do if you think I'm a sheep? Fine. Go be me. Go be the Richard Spencer that you think you're. Oh, I want you to be rich. I want you. Well, I want you, Richard, to regain well, your. You're going to be disappointed. Be this is who I am. But, this is who I Richard, am. You're going to be disappointed. Are, I'm sorry. You are, but you're like, somebody who you're somebody who wants to be sort of this contrarian. You're no, never going to go I, into the I, I mainstream, don't, don't. Richard. You're all you will manage to do. Taking this line is destroy yourself and alienate yourself from the people who once followed you. And for what? To please the liberals that you oppose and you at one time dedicated your life to defeating. And now you're just you're just going along with all of that. I, I don't. For what? I mean, I've got to run because I'm actually five minutes late for a stream. I don't want to be in. I think the nationalist movement is a hamster wheel. And but it's flourishing. Like, let me finish. I, I don't see it as flourishing. Well, I Nick would Fuentes never having join a thousand it. people at, a ma at this massive meeting. Go with join Nick Fuentes if that is the kind of stupid nonsense you are into. But you, okay? you, you would love to be speaking. No, about I that. wouldn't. <laughs> I do not want to be on stage with Marjorie Taylor Greene and Paul Gossner or whatever the hell. That is literally the most embarrassing possible thing I could imagine. Or claiming I'm America first and waving a flag and talking about how great Donald Trump is. That is cringe. You supported as Donald hell. Trump. You supported yes, and Donald I was Trump. wrong. We all rode the wave I of supported the Trump him train. in a in a particular moment and i recognize how wrong i was Why were you I, mean, wrong, I don't know what to tell you Why you're you so wrong, mad Richard? you want to expel me and i'm like okay i'm not trying to expel, expel you. I'm me again have a conversation because well, as we i can said, have a conversation but i don't like being on. called like you oh you know i'm a well, loser because well, nationalists don't like me anymore do you feel well, like i don't is, care is richard can i ask you Wait, 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 wait. I want to ask something. Do you feel like it's possible that, um, I mean, maybe Richard just had a change of heart, right? He went through his thing. And I, again, I know the audience doesn't like Richard to a certain extent, some of the a segment there, right? Um, but, uh, and again, you know, we have our differences too. I like Richard because he comes on and he talks and he's a, he stirs the, the drink here like I do a little bit. You know what I mean? Like gets people going. Uh, and he's always a good conversation. Uh, but I, I never thought he was... F I don't think Richard's fake. Uh, you know, I think he just maybe uh, has had a change of art, you know, like due to his experiences in the media and falling out with people. Well, me, okay, Ralph, just be quiet for two seconds, please. I'll ask you a question, Richard. Sure. Did you have a change of heart because you thought your views would actually wrong or did you have a change of heart because you didn't win because that's the important question you have to ask yourself because if you're having a change of heart because you didn't win that's not really a change of heart that's just painting a face on no uh i i think it's a maybe a bit of a com com uh, a, a bit of a combination of that i mean when you don't win at something and something leads down a path towards what i view as destruction or failure like getting off that path is not wrong, but I actually have evolved in certain directions. But one of my major evolutions is recognizing nationalism as a hamster wheel. And you feel like you're getting progress. You're spinning and spinning around in circles. And I don't, I'm not interested in it. I'm too old. I, I just, I want to develop intellectually and as a person, and I don't think that is possible. 
in a movement that just really cannot go anywhere and has, I think, really faulty instincts that will kind of always lead it to the same place. That's my assessment. You can Richard, totally Richard. disagree with me. Fair enough. That's just Richard. what my assessment is. Do you think I'm lying? Richard, do you know what it sounds like? There's an old phrase. Don't cry because it's over. Smile because it happened. Hold your head high and smile and say what you really are. Because to me, I would okay, rather fight but it, but it and sucks. lose. I would rather <laughs> fight and lose. I would rather fight and lose than paint on a false mask, pretend to be something I'm not, so I could say that I'm on the winning side. Because fighting and losing and maintaining your dignity okay. as a man, I believe I'm that means defending Richard Spencer, but he's not saying he he's not doing that. He's recognizing that it sucked, recognizing that it went nowhere, and he's out. But it hasn't yeah, gone nowhere, has it? It hasn't gone nowhere. That's why he's on Cozy <laughs> TV. That's why the NJP are having these gigantic he's, he's, rallies. He's, he's, he's on Cozy. He's not, he's, no, he's not on any of that stuff. He's out on Cozy I just now. don't want to do me. that stuff. I would much rather, like, go to the dentist than do that stuff. Uh, <laughs> okay. So Ask a, a and question. I gotta go. Oh, okay. Thank you, Richard. Yeah. I appreciate it. Thank you, Richard. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you. Stardust gets a question. She's been extremely polite. Oh, uh, no problem. Rewarded. Um. Uh. So, <laughs> do you feel? Do you feel that Mark is being kind of woke, scoldy with you right now? Do you feel like? <laughs> yeah, the, the the nationalist version of woke scoldy. Yeah, I kind of feel that a bit. Okay. The the other thing, he is basically saying that I'm lying, and I don't appreciate that. I do like Mark still. But I don't appreciate some notion that like who well, I really I am turn is something off. else so that I'm lying. I'm not lying. I'm not saying you're lying, you lying, but you just do. said part of the reason you're changing well, I'm, I'm, your I'm opinion is because happy you didn't for Richard Spencer to be out. I'm, I think it's great. <laughs> I think it's wonderful. Right. Ryan's always hated me, I believe. So yeah, he's happy. <laughs> so, so Ryan, is, do you is, hate him? No. Do you dislike I think the retard him? Rally. Yes, I don't think. I, right, it's not. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's not talking about like, um, like I had to. I, I learned from Charlottesville. But, but the thing is, that shouldn't be a thing you should learn. Is like the retard rallies, and and then I see January six was like the mother of all retard rallies. Right, it was like it was basically yeah. not. I've got to run. Uh, I don't. I don't. I'm not being. I'm not trying to be. Ro uh, no, Ryan. Thank you, Richard. I, yeah, Maybe we'll yeah, talk he's again. Late. Maybe we'll he's talk. Already late for another. Be, Ryan can continue talking. All right. We'll we'll Ryan get basically stuff. done. Thank you, I basically man. Said thing. Thank you. Man. Uh, okay, go ahead. You can continue with your point. I'm going to play. I, I already, I already, I already said the thing about the retard rallies in January six is 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 like it's basically not learning the lessons of Charlottesville and. And frankly, I don't think, uh, like, I, people, people don't know this, but I actually, like, um, got somebody who was in Charlottesville, asked me to, like, go there, and I said no. Um, and, and I was against these things all the way back to the White Man March. I don't know if anyone remembers the White Man March. So that's, I think, really the lesson is having these uncontrolled events leads to disaster. And what Richard Spencer is saying is saying that there's a lot of, like, shitty people in radical movements. And the thing is, in radical movements, you're going to get antisocial people, right? That's that's just the reality of the fringe, okay? So, um, and and it, it's painful to see uh, the America First crew not learning the lessons from the from the alt-right. And, and it's also, I wish Richard Spencer didn't have to learn that lesson in the worst possible way. So. All right, now let me play these super chats. Now, I know some of them were probably questions for Richard, so I do apologize. But um, and he did say for about an hour. But Mega Foot Dude sent three dollars. Richard Spencer is a retard. Retards are gay. Anonymous sent three dollars. Richard, you are an actual Chad football star. Fuck eugenist Russia. Eurasianism is bad for Europeans. Was he, a, was he a football star? Static sent he fifteen dollars. Hey Spencer, why do you have a gay lisp? All right, now why did it? Why did it stop there? There was okay. That's what's that? Anonymous sent three dollars. Shut up, bitch. Shut the fuck up, you stupid hairy bitch. Fuck you. Ah. All right. Dusthead Growiper sent ten dollars. Mommy Stardust. Milky, milky, warm and tasty. 
Mommy's milky, please be hasty, refreshing drink from Mommy's udders. I want Mommy's and no others. Give it. Give it. Jordan Chill. Give it now. All right. Maintenance guy Mike sent three dollars. Richard Spencer is a faggot. Let the libtards have him. By the way, big fan. Mark. A libtard. Uh. Anonymous sent three dollars. That Yankee had no answers for Mark. Red coat victory. Mike Scorber Germany sent three dollars. Jews are not a race. Richard Spencer, 2022. Hitler disagrees. Stalin disagrees. Napoleon disagrees. China disagrees. Tsarist Russia right. disagrees. Putin A lot disagrees. of disagreements there. And most importantly, Israel disagrees. Richard has officially left the chat. <laughs> Anonymous sent three dollars. Can't wait for Big Hake. Hake is the coming. guy with the good hair. That's to right. Join. He's on fire. Shout out to Hake. You know. Legend. Chathy has sent $3, you fucking dumbass. Richard Trump literally had 70 million votes for in the 2020 election. How did he lose voters? Anonymous sent $3. This sounds like a meme, but I promise it's true. Here in NZ, a guy got murdered by someone with a gun. His corpse tested positive and our <laughs> national government funded news confirmed that he was oh, counted shit. as a COVID death. Anonymous sent three dollars. Richard, Sorry, Mark is a duty retard. He wants whites to become multicultural. Fuck him up. Anonymous sent three dollars. Dusters rise up. <laughs> nice. Player one sent five dollars. Richard, we get it. You took a deal with the feds or are jealous of AF. Mark Comp sent three dollars. Did this retard who took the vax vaccinate his kids too? Now, Rest wait a minute, high. don't. Oh. Godzilla37 sent $3 Spencers are retards. Mike Scorper Germany sent $3. Richard said, Russia is losing this war. My friend, Russia is getting 40% of all weapons delivered to Ukraine. Billions of dollars of Western weaponry. The Pentagon has confirmed oh. it. Called Ukraine a for weapon shipments. Cope? Z? Oh, I didn't know that. That would be hilarious, though. Anonymous sent three dollars. Richard Nick loses tonight at nine thirty p.m. EST. It's over. Celebrate. Regain Big debate control. tonight. I'm the moderator. I've had some good burgers in my day. Sent three dollars. Oh. I love a good melted Swiss caramelized it's Swiss so cheese with caramelized onions on a burger. That is hot stuff. Said with massively homosexual no. turbo faggot power bottom list. That's not. I would be very suspicious if he denies the debate sent $3 mark. There is a hunt to find someone that will debate the moon landing against Vincent James. He believes it was faked. Will you be the man? What do you think about moon landing, Mark? Hold on, what? Gersh sent $3. Hey, it's me, your pal, Gersh. I like this Shout Mark guy. Gersh. When can we get Mark Collett on Cozy? Uh, See. I've seen a lot of people asking that. Gristle sent $3. Richard Spencer is bought to you by Pfizer. Uh. <laughs> Is he pro-vax? Biden yeah. hasn't been a disaster lol. Must be nice to not have to worry about inflation and gas prices. Spencer, you are such a fake clown. Godzilla 37 sent $3 retards are gay. <laughs> it's gone, Christian it's gone. Nationalist sent $5 mark. Have you thought about doing a Warhammer 40k Dawn of War tournament? The game plays similar to Command and Conquer. You can get it on Steam. Maybe Dark Crusade. What do you say to that, Mark? Definitely. I'd also be up for doing uh, Total War Warhammer because I actually have oh. that. Uh, I've never played that, but I played a lot of Total No, it's War. free on... It, it was one of the free games on the Epic Games Store. If you if you register with Epic okay. Games... You yeah, get yeah, free yeah, game I have a $3, Richard Spencer. You're more like Richard spends all his time with wieners in his butt. <laughs> A homo retard. George Floyd sent three dollars. Ooga booga. This be George. big Floyd to landlord. Hello, Can George. that brown shaboon send some pregnant no, no. dollar pits, Maine? <laughs> She'd be right up Ma Street, Maine. George, please. 
He has no shell, even from the other side. Anonymous sent three dollars when the dust settles. A star street shitter remains. Now, all right. Now, what about uh, trannies? That was the other topic that I had picked out for today. Have they stopped now? I'll check back in in a minute. Have the, have the trannies stopped? No, I don't think no. So. I stopped the super. Oh wait, there's one from Entropy too. Let me let me check that. Static Forty Nine says you're so mad, Spencer. That's right. Keep seething and raising your voice like a woman. You uh, homosexual, he said there. Uh, have the tranny stopped? No, they haven't stopped. Um, matter of fact, I just rem- I just remembered. I need to message that Jeff Younger dude who's running for for Congress down there in Texas. Actually, his ex wife is a psychologist, psychiatrist. Uh, anyway, they got a divorce, and now his son is being, um, I guess you could say castrated or transitioned depending on your your point of view there and turned into a uh, daughter uh, instead basically against his will and i think he's finally been denied all contact with his son he's running for the u.s house uh down there in texas um what would you say mark uh, i know in the uk there's uh there's a lot of um there's been a lot of movement in the last five or ten years as far as um rights parents don't have or do have uh when their kids want to transition or are talked into transitioning depending on your point of view <laughs> again uh by the school system what what would you say starting off on this topic well quite simple pushing transgender nonsense on children is child abuse and uh, helping children to take on the fantasy that they can change their gender and medically facilitating or medically attempting to facilitate such a thing to create these Frankenstein freaks is tantamount to the ultimate child abuse. Now, what about you? Well, I'll just start with Stardust because I'm thinking you might have a different take. What Or do you? I don't know. What do you think as far as, uh, I guess you'd go transgender rights, but specifically the kids being involved. Um, what what do you think? Where's the line, I guess, as far as, you know, hormone blockers and transitioning and. Mm. Uh, so I, I can't really comment on, um, on kids and how early they should be, be, um, uh, getting treatment for sure. There, there seems to be, um, very few things that help when somebody is experiencing gender dysphoria and i think that's like has to be one of the most hor- horrible things that somebody goes through especially knowing that so many of these people um feel like they can't live the way that they're born um i don't know where where the treatment should be starting what age it should be starting i do know that um as soon as somebody's 18 um and they're an adult i think they have the right to do with their body what they want um and if if the only treatment that helps them is um, is transitioning, then I think it's fair that we allow them to do that because that's that's going to affect whether they can live their life. Well, that's a bit of a it's a little bit of a cop out answer because we're not talking about eighteen year olds; we're talking about children. And well, I don't know right. the answer. I don't know how old you. I don't know. Right. I don't know how old you are. I'm not going to ask your age because apparently it's impolite to ask a woman her age. But I would say that you are over the age of eighteen. And anyone who is over the age of 18, I'm, I'm 40, I'm 42 this year. I am well aware that children and young people go through a series of phases and a child can be completely convinced of something for a week, a month, a year. They can think they want to dedicate the rest of their life to something. They think that something's absolutely right and correct for them only to completely change their mind. Never think of that thing again and move forward with our life and take a completely different uh, path in life. And that happens regularly. It's called going through a phase. And children and teenagers, adolescents, go through phases all the time. I don't there think are many young- phases lead them to wanting to kill themselves, though, because they feel like they're in the wrong body, right? No, the fact right. is there but is such a high suicide rate amongst these people because when they do go through these transitions it's not really a transition a man can never become a woman he can become a eunuch he can have mutilated genitals he can have a gaping wound in between his legs for the rest of his life but he never becomes a woman and then when that phase passes uh, 
they naturally feel depressed and hang themselves because they are a freak at that point that can never be fixed. And that's why in the UK, there are a number of people who transitioned when they were very young, the doctors signed off on this, who are now suing the NHS and the British government and the medical establishment for allowing them to do something when really, as they're admitting now, they should never have been trusted to make a decision about something so serious. I mean, let's face it, we don't let children make decisions about what they can have for their tea. We don't let them drive cars. We don't let them uh, own their own homes. In fact, they don't get to decide even basic things. But I'm now we're saying they can them. decide that they can change their gender, I'm not make a life changing choice. Yeah, so <laughs> I, I have not, and I never have, advocated for, for children to completely transition under the age of 18. As far as like puberty blockers go, that's between the doctor, the parent, and the child. And puberty blockers have been used on people who enter puberty too early. We've been using those, um, I think, uh, since like the 90s. Um, so uh, if you have a problem with people using puberty blockers, I would say they have been using puberty blockers for decades now for other, for other medical issues, for specifically for, for um, children who go through puberty too early because it is bad for them when they go through puberty too early. Um, and and so um you know they put them on the puberty blockers and then when it's time then they take them off um so i i can't really say um and i don't know all of the science behind um uh, behind uh people taking puberty blockers when they feel that gender dysphoria um but um i don't i don't I don't know enough to, to deny it either and i trust the medical professionals um at least in the united states because um because i know that they're you know there is um a process um in which somebody is evaluated for gender dysphoria and i don't want a child or a parent to lose their child because that child is suffering so badly from dysphoria that they decide to kill themselves right so uh, it's funny a weak emotional it. argument right right um one thing I, I uh found i saw that was sort of interesting is when the basically the hormones that uh that a lot of trannies get in the u.s apparently they're produced in china and covid like cut off that supply and so there i saw a whole bunch of twitter posts where they were actually um melting like plastic bags into <laughs> in, into like a pot in order to maintain like estrogen levels and i'm thinking about that and i'm thinking like there's also apparently there's like more microplastics in people than there have ever been at any point in time in history obviously and i also know that you know something like um people today who are like 20 have testosterone levels similar to that of like 65 year olds at that same time period and now look i don't now i also know that uh that people with gender dysphoria males with gender dysphoria don't have abnormally low testosterone that is not true however when you're looking at like the decline in testosterone you know maybe it's not the test the decline in testosterone per se that's causing them to be gender dysphoric but something's going on hormonally, right? And it, it's hap and it's sy and it's systemic. Zoomers are more gender weird than than any generation previously. So I think uh, like like this like gender dysphoria is a problem. And the thing is, transitioning does not change the suicide rate. It's about the same whether you transition or not. It, it doesn't go up after you transition. Um, it's it stays about the same. So, but the thing is, transitioning is not a solution. To that problem and uh it's a like the problem is is something going on at the hormonal level and people just don't the medical profession doesn't seem to be that interested in figuring out what that is and solving this problem because to solve the problem would be i think to they identify are i think i think right now the best treatment well there's that there's, solu have, there's solutions tend to be tra transitioning right, and, sure and, that's the best treatment they have at this time but it doesn't mean right, that they they're aren't not, they're looking not, into other things, right? Right to, now, to the best it. thing that they have, the best thing that they have. Um, look, I don't know what what they're researching. I'm sure they're researching other things. Right now, the best treatment that they have for a child that is suffering from gender dysphoria who wants to kill themselves because they feel like they're in the wrong body is to give them puberty blockers um, and 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 send them to therapy. And if that can help that child for a bit, then I'm in doesn't. favor of that. It, 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 has, it, it has no effect. That's the problem. It has no effect on suicide. 
Right? We're There's just no talking, we're, we're not even that. talking about transitioning here. We're only talking about children getting puberty blockers and going to therapy. Frankly, I think it would be better if guys who feel like they're a woman to just not do anything permanent to their genitals and just embrace being femboys. And then, because then they can maybe grow out of it. <laughs> but anyway. I know. I, I don't know, because even if they like grow into being like, whatever a fanboy is like isn't it isn't a lot of like what you guys are for like you know not into that not for fanboy you guys have very no strict no gender roles what, I, for what, men, I'm, right? what i'm saying so, what so i'm saying really is that is that that is a men, that is a less i'm saying that is a less permanent <laughs> that, that is a less permanent thing if right? you have a really strict gender roles for men and then you're saying that these men that don't fit into these strict gender roles, well, they should just, they should still be like not as good men because that's like, let's be real. Like that's probably like, that is what the thought is. Right. Um, uh, like why, why would they, if they feel like they're woman and they, and they want to kill themselves because they feel like they're woman. I don't know what, I, I don't know what to tell you guys. It's not like you guys are feeding into a healthy, um, a healthier world for those people because they still feel like they want to kill themselves. Sure. But transitioning doesn't solve it either. So I'm, I think it would just be better if, the, if you don't chop off your balls. That's all I'm saying. Look, the number of people that that's, would that's actually true. genuinely go through this in a healthy society would be very small. The reason the number of people in society who want to transition is growing is because there is increasingly highly politicized and sexual material pushed upon children from ever younger ages to deliberately confuse them and make them grow up questioning things. So, for example... When I was young, if a little girl decided that she wanted to climb trees, build tree houses and play on the rope swing with a little boy, she was called a tomboy. And these little girls grew up to be women and have children and get on with their life. Today, um, sick liberal degenerates seize upon any slight thing to tell children that they're in the wrong body, effectively brainwashing them. Mark, Mothers do it to get just bad. telling me last time we spoke that um, that uh, you had pretty strict gender roles for women too. Why do you think that that would not make a woman feel really strange when she's um, when she continues no, 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 to no, be no, a tomboy no, no, into no, no, adulthood? Gender roles. No, the fact is, gender roles. <laughs> you see, this is this is the problem with liberal thinkers. It's that they don't think and they don't observe reality around themselves. Gender roles weren't something created by humanity. They were created by nature. Gender roles were created by nature because we were or are products of nature. The humanity has over time advanced technologically, which has divorced us from the natural world and the natural pressures. And gender roles uh, might I'm not be less pervasive. That. I'm not, than I'm not they denying were. that gender role has gender roles have some basis in them. biology. I'm not even yeah, saying basis uh, wait, in biology. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Okay. I'm not one of those liberals who thinks that gender roles are completely dis disconnected from biology. I'm not one of those. Okay. I do think it's connected to, to biology. However, I still think that gender roles um in in the way that you define them mark are too strict that it, like if you continue to be a tomboy up into into adulthood or you continue to be a femboy into adulthood those people don't um in in your world would not fit in and they wouldn't know where to fit in um i think no, 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 the no, very no. fact that we wait a minute i think the very fact that we have very strict gender roles and people feel like they have to transition be, if they don't fit strictly into that gender role is a problem with those gender roles i don't think no, no, no. people think well, that what we're saying here is that you're saying when, that a with a tomboy. No, you're saying that a tomboy. When little girls, when little girls were used once to, called tomboys, yes, they were called tomboys. They used to climb trees, but, but no now, one would be on their shoulders saying, "Hey, you're actually a boy. Let's get you on some puberty block and blockers now, and get you transitioning." They don't and now say they that. Do because they don't these say that. Sick pedophiles who and want to now, harm children. When when girls grow into adulthood and continue to be tomboys, they and they are told that you know being a woman is being this, this, and this and they don't fit into those things, what do you think that they think they are? What do you think they're a tomboy? 
Uh, well, I mean, not really. If you think that, but when that, you grow up, you develop into an adult human always. being. You're no longer a child. A lot of women and don't. If you fail to develop into an adult human being, then well, that, that's a problem with you. Not into, the, not with not into this woman stereotype that you're making. This strict well, woman no, stereotype. You don't, you don't have. To, no woman has to take on that stereotype. As I said to you last time we met, women are women are more than welcome by modern standards to die alone in people in old people's homes childless despised with their employee of the month award on the wall go for it it's no do skin of my nose when you say when do you think when you say that and when you advocate for a very much more stricter gender roles that the average person probably doesn't meet all of the requirements in those gender roles do you think that you are contributing to people feeling like they don't fit into their gender or not no what I, I legislate for the overwhelming majority, what you do is legislate for a tiny minority, it's then try to reshape minority. society The average person does not minority. fit into their gender role um, 100%, right? Like for the me, average for example, person I'm overwhelmingly very, fits into their gender role. No, no, no. Role. Okay, for me, for example, it. for me, for as, as a woman, like I, I check off all these lists in the, in the woman gender role, right? The one thing that I don't check off is maybe I'm a little bit too opinionated, right? Um, eh, like, but what if oh, I, didn't I think check that's off? <laughs> what if I didn't check off more than more than that? What What if I didn't check off like th like three or four things in that? What if What if I didn't like to cook? What if I didn't you know didn't want to get married or something like that? Right? Do you think that I I I would feel like I belong in this gender role? You see, this is the problem. <laughs> what you do is you're the sort of person who there's 15 of you going out for dinner, 14 want pizza, and one says, I prefer burger. And instead of going for pizza, you're saying, oh, we better go for burger, because no, otherwise the one person we'll who, who the wants burger, burger will feel left out. on the way out. to the pizza place. It's not that hard. And it, you know, the fact is, when it comes down to it, nature determines what we are. And the vast majority of people do fit into those normal gender roles or humanity would cease to exist. And people who have attempted to push people of European descent away from their natural gender role have done so because they wish to reduce the Western birth rate as part of their white genocide scheme. And then when the Western birth rate falls, they say, oh, my God, there's not enough people here. We how are we going to look after all you old people? Better bring in some immigrants then and uh, change the demographic makeup of the com country. Well, why, why, why the need for that? Why not just have babies? Why not just follow your natural role? Because that is something that is being increasingly off closed off to people in the West for political purposes. Significantly off of the topic. We were talking about off, gender off roles. The trannies. We were talking about trannies, and then we got into the roles of women and, and yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, I can't really comment on 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 uh, transgender issues because well, we I don't feel like the roles of women, though. Right. Well, <laughs> well, no, well, no, like I, like Mark, I think is is focused more on like sort of the enabling of transgender, and that's obviously like increase, but like. I, I don't have the numbers off the, uh, at my fingertips. So I think it's something like like 5% or something of Zoomers are like tranny, sex weird, something like that. And Why don't just say transgender? Like, <laughs> because it's more than just transgender. Right? There's also, it, it's like, the thing is, I guess, okay, I, I sort of conceptually lump like bisexuality in with transgender a little bit, like it's sort of on a continuum. So I kind of, I kind of view it all as sort of the same thing. So that's why I use that term. Um, but I don't know what percentage is specifically transgender, but obviously it's like a lot more than it has been before. And I think Mark Collette, like, sure, it's it's being enabled by like by people going around saying, oh, you're a tomboy. Let's get you on puberty blockers and, and turn you into a man. But uh, don't like like the fact that horm that the, that our hormones are diff are different than they've ever been at any other place in time in history. Uh, I think puberty that's blockers kind aren't of hormones. No, no, no. I'm saying. I'm saying that the hormones of people today, like not on, not on anything, just like the 20 year olds, just looking at testosterone alone, 20 year olds being the same testosterone level as like 65 year olds at their age group. Uh, that's yeah, like, like I, th I think there, there's a lot of talk about like these sociological sort of things, as opposed to looking at something more basic that's going on. Uh, I, think I don't that's see kind of how problem. you guys can advocate for these very strict gender roles, 
right? And then not realize what the, okay, uh, well, what the outcome okay. is going to be when somebody when somebody feels like they don't fit very strictly into that gender role. Okay, well, I I, I don't advocate for strict. Gender. That's the most ludicrous thing I've ever heard. We know what the outcome of natural and decent and moral gender roles is because moral those gender moral. roles. Yeah, yeah, moral. So a man marries a woman, they have children, they bring up those children, the woman raises what the children, the man goes out to work. The fact is, that when feels that happens, moral. When that but happens, it feels moral. Okay. Yes, build, that, yes, that's, 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 what, happens, that's what morality society. is. Western civilization is based on that. And if that wasn't the case, Gay sex is gross. That if, makes it immoral. If that, if that was not the case, you wouldn't be here, Stardust, because you came to the West because the West created a better world, and it created a better world off the back of normal, natural, healthy gender roles. It didn't create a better world from madness, degeneracy, and not having children. It's as simple as that. The, the fruits of natural gender roles are everywhere you look in the West because the traditional family is the bedrock of our society and the destruction of that traditional family with all the madness you are seeing is like taking a sledgehammer to that bedrock and once you've done enough family. damage it will collapse so you know and that's it that's one of the reasons i'm, I'm why not anti-traditional family that like that's ridiculous all i am saying is that i i don't care okay like uh like uh, i'm not anti-traditional family if you want to have your nuclear family i don't care i think the extended family is fine i think it's great i think that um i think that uh you know families are are great and i'm a very family values person um but i think you are doing yourself a disservice when you make these very strict gender roles and then you say that men have to be a certain way and if they destroy outside of that of, of what a man should be then they're you know then they're defective or something like that there is an issue there and that that probably directly contributes to more people feeling like they don't fit in with their gender and that they need to change it but the point is you have to have a normal standard, and m the vast majority need to adhere to that normal standard. Why can't a tomboy marry an, uh, marry in a husband and have a traditional family like anybody else? I didn't say they, they couldn't, but, but that's a total straw man because I didn't say they couldn't. I said, if you had listened to what I was saying, I said quite clearly that when I was younger, little girls who did things that were typically the kind of pursuit the little boys did were called tomboys. They were completely accepted. And then they grew up, they became a woman, they had a family. And that was that. Right. What they I became said earlier. A woman and they grew out of it. Though. What I said earlier was that today, if a girl likes climbing trees, if a girl likes doing things which would make her at one time simply be described as a tomboy, some liberal ghoul jumps on her back, tells her that maybe she should be a boy, slaps her on puberty blockers and convinces her that she should mutilate her genitals, have her breasts cut off and become one of these Frankenstein creatures who then goes on to hang themselves because of what they've done or what they've been through. The point is the liberal establishment is full of these monstrosities and they are doing this to children on an increasing level and eventually it'll said, be an industrial level. When mm. you said that tomboys like grow up and they become a woman and they start a family is not yeah, little girls go on to become not, a woman. Is it not implied then that they grow out of that tomboyishness? No. Becoming a yes. woman becoming a yes, woman is implied is growing up once you've gone through that you become a woman and a woman then goes on hopefully to be a wife have children and fulfill her natural or um you know god-given duties and at that point society continues and once you remove all of the things that i've just said society doesn't continue anymore because what you see is a decline in the birth rate a perversion of normalcy and the end of a civilization all right, now uh, we're going to take some callers too. We're we're set up on Telegram. Four callers. Uh, I see. Um, I don't even know uh, Motley Crew over here uh, on Telegram. BC Covington, can you hear me? Yo, can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead. Yo, what's up, guys? Uh, what's, up? Ralph, what's going on, Mark? You doing great? So, uh, is Ryan still here? Yeah, he is. Right. Yep. Yeah. 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 Ryan, you're awesome. Um, questions are for Stardust, though. Uh, 
Stardust, you were talking about the medical treatment of uh, gender dysphoria, and you said that there's nothing better than transitioning, right? You, you were kind of conceding. It might not be perfect, but there's nothing better. At Is this that your point? Yeah, at this right? point in time, they don't have anything that's better than that right now. Right, and they're not looking. Uh, what are you basing that on? Do you have any medical training, or are you up to date on anything? That's from all the. That's from the reading that I've done. Um, but I mean, if you have something that's more updated, I'm willing to look at it. So. Do you have any medical training at all? I do have medical training, actually. How so? Uh, I don't want to give away that information, but um, but uh, I've done plenty of reading um, uh, on this subject, um, and from what I can tell. It okay, seems so that it seems like, that this is a to call it, call it, let me answer, buddy. Okay. Okay, um, stop. It's uh, so from from all the reading that I've done and from the people that I've talked to, it seems that right now this is the best treatment that they have. Now go. Ahead. Okay, now from someone who works in medicine, you're wrong. Okay. Have you ever heard of pimazide? No. Okay, so. You're not up to date on your reading, and I don't know what training you have, but it's very inadequate, clearly. And it's it, whatever it is, it's certainly not in psychiatry or psychiatric. No, it's, it's not in psychiatric. It's not in psychiatric. Pimazada is an antipsychotic that has like a huge success rate, especially in minors who have gender dysphoria. Highly curative. No, they, they they lose their they lose their dysphoria. They lose their the biggest thing is they lose their wish to transition. What's the what's the name of this drug? Pimazada. No, it's for Tourette's, I think. Can Why you not? type the, Can someone type the name of this drug? T i l o z i b e. It's not just for Tourette's. It's it, antipsychotics have many uses. P i m o z i b e. Uh, like if you want a paper, here I'll, I'll put it in the cozy chat. This is just one from uh, uh, This is just one. I'll take a look at this. I'm willing to read up on it. Um, but like, yeah, I, I'm. Uh, from oh, yeah, what yeah, there's lots of things like this, and you're just you're you're you're, you're spreading falsehoods basically by saying right now the sign the, the from what, what from the people I've talked to, from the transgender people I've talked to, from the other people I've talked to, it oh, seems that right now it seems that right now that like transition yeah, transition. Okay, I'm can you BC BC? Can you please? I'm no. being I'm being good faith with you. Can you can you can you chill just a little bit? <laughs> go ahead okay right i will i'm very happy to read up on this pimazide um but from what i've heard from people and from what i've read it seems right now that most people say that transitioning is the best way to alleviate symptoms now, i'm willing to read i'm willing to read i'm willing to read up on this and i will read up on this okay now, okay, now, now i'll respond the very vocal <laughs> political people say that because like what the other two people in this call are saying they don't want it cured they want it they want it mainstream they want it normalized they want uh transitioning to appear to be the best even though it doesn't change at all the suicide rate and doesn't have any uh it doesn't have any cure i've talked, I've talked to transgender people who said i let that, you finish okay i let you finish didn't i so pimazide does actually have these things but why don't why don't why do only the medical people know about pimazide but not like the mainstream people it's because this is a very politicized issue. It's not a medicalized issue. This is actually taken out of the hands of a lot of medical people because of how politicized it is. Otherwise, all these kids would be on Pimazide. Um, how recent was this study on Pimazide? Uh, well, there, there's many. This is just one. This is just one that I quickly found. This was what, in, in the 90s? And there's plenty in the 2000s and 2010s too. Pimazide is very effective in gender dysphoria, particularly among the youth. And the reason why they know that is because Pimazide is an antipsychotic used for other things that the young typically have, like tics and ADHD. And what they noticed is in young people who had tics and ADHD and also gender dysphoria, they were prescribed Pimazide for the other things and they noticed their gender dysphoria went away. So then they had these studies and trials on, wait, this might be... Uh, an antipsychotic that can help with this, and it does. They, they have many normalized, many randomized control trials on this. It's very successful. It's very effective, and it has none of the permanent effects of transitioning and things like that. Okay, uh, well, I will coming. take a look into it. I will take a right. look into it. Um, uh, I've talked to some transgender people who said if they could take a pill to to make their dysphoria go away, then they would. Um, so yeah, definitely, I'll take a look into this. They should have. Okay, okay, then, uh, uh, PC Covington or whatever. Uh, con try to contact me on Gab. Uh, I want to hear about this Pimazide stuff. And yeah, I've never heard about that either, actually. 
But yeah, it's, so it's an antipsychotic, and the, the reason why it's not mainstreamed is because it actually knocks right. two birds with one stone that they don't want. One, right. Right. It's, so, it's very effective at curing uh, gender dysphoria. They don't want that. They want it normalized. The other thing is, it's an antipsychotic. If an antipsychotic cures gender dysphoria, it suggests that gender dysphoria is psychotic. Yeah, try, try to contact me on Gab on this stuff. Uh, well. BC, thank you, man. I appreciate you calling in. Thank you, Ralph. All right, you have a good one. Uh, now I see a super brother here, and uh, I see he had. I'm gonna bring him in. I'm gonna bring him in first. Can he? Can you hear me, super brother? Uh, let's see where'd he go. I thought I just turned him on, and now I don't see him. There he is. Yeah, you have to unmute yourself though, uh, if you want to talk. I see your donation. Hey, can you hear me? Your your killstream.live slash tip here. So sorry for not hitting those, but I figured I'd bring you in first since I didn't do that. Uh, sweet. Yeah, hey. go ahead. <laughs> Hey, can you hear me, bros? Yes, yes. All right, sweet. Hey, uh, Stardust, I got a question for you real fast. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, you were mentioned, I, and Mark, I'd ask, I'm just asking that you remain quiet on this one. I actually, one of those tips has a question for you and Richard, but guess who decided to bounce? Anyway, uh, so Stardust, you were talking about how people don't actually fit the 100% uh, into the, uh, the molds of what Mark would call 100% male versus Mar what Mark would call 100% female. Uh, well, I just got a question. I'd like you to expand on that. So on Sunday, this past Sunday, I did a little bit of work on my truck, uh, cut up a tree, you know, the genuine manly thing that mark hollett would just obnoxiously you know nod his head towards and all that other crap uh, but uh you know my girlfriend wasn't feeling too hot so i decided to make a turkey meatloaf uh for dinner i'm wondering what kind of dress i need to buy to fit your little definition what who are you asking that stardust oh um, yeah okay yeah sorry. stardust because I, I guess I'm, I'm not getting the joke um the, what, what what, what, what uh, okay so wondering what little mold that uh you know i'm kind of fitting here because apparently i'm a little bit off on the whole masculine trait uh th no that's not that's not what i'm saying at all what i'm saying is that the uh, the the roles that gender that that or the the roles that that um that mark is uh it, kind of like it seems to that he seems to advocate for seem to be a little bit too strict for the average person that's all uh, I think I'm, I think I'm pretty average. And I think that, uh, Mark would gladly sit down and eat my turkey meatloaf. I mean, like, I'm just saying well, maybe he would. Yeah. Maybe your turkey meatloaf is good. <laughs> yeah, turkey meatloaf. That's that sounds pretty. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Better but, uh, beef. to jump a real beef, fast, man. jump on, uh, the whole, uh, trans thing. I'm personally not offended by the existence of trans people. I really don't care. Uh, but what I will say on that working as a firefighter and a paramedic, Go into various medical reasons to go into someone's house. Trans people did seem to have a much, much higher rate of drug use and uh, general, I guess the word would be unkeptness. Uh, I, I mean, this isn't really something anyone needs to answer, but there's definitely a mental series of mental issues going on with the trans community. Uh, so whatever anyone knows about that, I'd love to hear it. But G gender yeah. dysphoria well, is, is very painful to go through, I'm sure. So, Captain stating the obvious, uh, a man that thinks he's a woman is mental. Uh, yes, indeed. <laughs> that is the case. Yeah. And obviously, right. hey, I'm out. Uh, Y'all have a great time and buy some damn it's heat wave sunglasses. Right? Ah, well, thank you, sir. I'm going to for sure. All right. Later, boss. Hey, right. thank you, Stardust. Thank you, Mark. Later. Thank right. you. All right, go ahead, Mark. You were going to finish. Your no, point. just he made a good point. You know, these people are people who are, you know, have mental issues and they need to be, you know, they need to be solved and you need to get to the root of them. But telling somebody they can become something that they can never become in order to make them feel better it is foolish. It's just foolish. All right, now let's see here. Um, there's some super chats and some callers. I'm going to take another caller, though. Let's keep the callers going. I'm trying to see who was in here first. I don't really know. I know Forgotten American. He was really psyched to call in earlier. You have to unmute yourself, though. After I call on you on Telegram, you have to personally unmute yourself. There you go, yeah, Forgotten American. You yeah, go ahead. All right. Yeah, say just wanted to say something real quick. Uh, Ralph, uh, amazing job with the show. It's going Thank fantastic, you. dude. Like always. Um, For almost fifteen hundred live right now. By the way, uh, just shy of that. Fucking so. it, brother, killing it. Um, and then Mark, um, all the shit I was gonna say, you totally just like unleashed 
and you said it in a very quaint and only way that you know a british uh brother could so like that was very awesome you called out spencer without like denigrating him but you like Unmasked. It was beautiful. It was beautiful. So uh, thank well, you very much. Thank and, you. Very much. Uh, so other than that, I was going to weigh in on the you know the issues you guys were just talking about, but I wasn't really here for that, and uh, so I, I I won't. Um, so I'm just going to leave it be. Um, God bless you all, and have a good rest of your day, guys. God bless. Thank so, you, man. Appreciate thank you very much. It. All right, let's keep going with the calls here. No dice. Go ahead and unmute yourself, and then you can uh, talk to the panel here. The Supreme Panel. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, there you go. Go ahead. How are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you doing? Not too bad. Uh, just got a question for starters. What is you? How does you feel about trans being in the military? Uh, okay. I don't know. I I don't know enough especially, about it. Especially given the the high rate of suicide. I don't know enough about it to comment on it. Okay, let me let me let me ask you a more direct question. Do you believe people who are by a multiple factor more likely to commit suicide should be allowed in the military where they would have access, easy access to weaponry that could potentially harm themselves and those around them? I mean, depressed people are in the military, right? Ah, nice dodge. Nice dodge. Well, are they not? Or no, but what I'm saying is no, that's actually incorrect. If you are talking about odds ratios. as being clinically depressed, you would be removed from any wars or not. In the UK, I know a guy who went to fight in um I think it was Iraq at the time, and basically he was diagnosed with depression and he was immediately pulled away from any active combat and flown out on the next plane because you cannot trust people like that with um, with weaponry because they may do harm to themselves, but also if they're in an active combat situation, they may do harm to others around them in their own squad. So what he's basically asking you is, based on the fact that they have a much higher likelihood of committing suicide, is it a good idea to have them serve in the armed forces? Um, I mean, if it's, if it's interfering, uh, if they have a mental, um, like a mental thing that's interfering, obviously not, but like veterans already have a pretty high suicide rate, right? So there's a lot of issues there to fix. Basically, the simple answer from any normal person would be somebody with that kind of mental health issue would not be somebody who would do well in the what armed forces, especially different? not in a combat. What, what did I say that was different from that? But you seem to be very evasive when any because you are obviously cut from a liberal cloth and you, you can't seem to give I a gave, I solid gave the exact and straightforward same answer, answer as you. I gave the exact same answer as you. Just put wait, the, a long, I just elaborated look, a little bit the houses. Yeah, wait, a minute, the houses I, wait a minute, wait a minute. I just I gave the exact same answer as you, and I only added that veterans have a high suicide rate. So are you telling me that I'm wrong so about that? that? I said so the exact same thing then. as you. So you're so trans, with me, trans, trans, trans should not be in the military. Genders would not. I, if they have a mental, if they have a mental issue that is interfering with their ability to serve, then then yeah, sure. Superb. So, so transgenders not good for the army. Agreed. I I mean, it, look, yeah, sure. I don't know. All right, now let's take another caller. Maybe we got a little agreement here on the panel. Uh, let's see. XL, go ahead. You have to unmute yourself. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. Hey, what's up, Ralph? Good stream, by the way. Thank you. Uh, basically, I have a question for Mark Collette. I don't know who the, who you are, but what's your opinion on AF or just Nick Fuentes in general? Because you were like promoting him when you were debating Richard Faggot Spencer. That was, no, what, what I was saying, let me clarify the point that I made to Richard Spencer. Is Richard Spencer, since deciding that he wants to distance himself from you know what he calls the alt-right. Let's just call the dissident right. The alt-right has been called white nationalism. It's been called uh, numerous things. And at one point it was called the alt-right. But since he's distanced himself from the dissident right, he has tried to claim that since there's 
leaving of the dissident license. He's left it behind. It's somehow in massive decline. And I was pointing out that the National Justice Party, which is run by some great friends of mine, Mike Enoch, Warren Balog, Eric Stryker, they have three to 400 people at these big rallies that do absolutely fantastic, great speeches given. Nick Fuentes, with America First, also part of the dissident right, has equally fantastic rallies in these big, lovely conference centres with actual elected officials, nationally known elected officials there, people like Jared Taylor there, uh, other internet celebrities there, and he draws upwards of a thousand people. And what I was saying to Richard was that he is painting this rather disingenuous picture that the dissident right has somewhat collapsed. And I was saying the dissident right is doing fantastically and that he is just somewhat irked that he is not still involved. And I know Richard Spencer. He used to love speaking at the big rallies. He used to hold them himself. And he would love to be in Nick Fuentes's position, standing and speaking to a thousand people. That's just a fact, because that is, that is what Richard was and where Richard flourished. All right. That's good to hear. That's well, all I had. Good. And, and, I, and, and if somebody oh, says, do oh, I praise oh, Nick thanks. Fuentes? Well, any young man who can organize a meeting with a thousand people present, get elected officials there and do it all without the meeting being closed down, attacked by Antifa, and at the same time make national headlines, well, the boy's done good. And anyone who says he hasn't is either completely delusional or painting a false narrative out of some kind of bitterness. All right, now let's see. Brenton Johnson, go ahead. You're on the Killstream Super Show Counterpoints versus Nick Fuentes live tonight, 9 p.m. Eastern. Go ahead. Oh, wow. Thanks for the intro. Uh, hey, Stardust. I, um, I just want to preface this by saying I'm a little bit like Ryan Falk over here when it comes to my autism with the whole transgender thing. And I had some issues with some of the things you said earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, I got a lot of questions for Close you. Your door. I actually got a lot more things. Sorry. I got Close a lot more things door. to say to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah okay. sorry about that. I got no, it's it. okay. <laughs> uh, firstly, firstly, I guess we'll start with the... Um, sex reassignment surgery thing do you think that's actually like uh just generally maybe a good thing maybe in some conditional cases look i've already prefaced this entire issue with that i i don't know a lot of a lot of like the specifics on this all i can say is that from what okay. i've heard from people and what i've read that um that uh a reassignment seems to be like the best treatment they have right now. If somebody has, um, you know, like that Pimazide study or whatever, I'm willing to read okay. it. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's good. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Okay. Firstly, there's no such thing as a sex reassignment surgery, not principally and not even in practice. And I learned, I first learned this by infiltrating. I say infiltrating because they're actually pretty private and sometimes they, require you to provide some sort of proof but what you can't change your gender oh my god yeah i mean sorry your sex right sorry you can't change your sex oh my god you've blown my mind wow you're born with a biological sex holy shit dude i didn't even know that i didn't know you could change you couldn't change that jeez damn like wow it's not a semantic it's not a semantic, it's not a semantic argument if you'll let me finish please okay go ahead call her so I, I learned from the victims of this surgery themselves that the surgery just doesn't exist. That's why you have cosmetic surgeons doing it. There's what? no there's it's cosmetic professional practice. There's you laugh, no Stardust. Clinical. There is no clinical surgery. There's no. There's no teaching of it. There's no practice for it. It's just people. So you're telling me that feminization surgery is cosmetic? Wow. Now wait, let all high wait, 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 hold on. Did, Call her, hold on. Say, I did not say it's cosmetic. I said it's cosmetic surgeons that are doing it. Okay, so now it's call not her a real surgery. It's not taught anywhere. Okay, now call her, hold on. Go ahead. Go ahead, Ryan. You want to say something? Well, okay, start us like you you go wow and you kind of mock the idea that that people would actually think that this sex reassignment surgery is somehow biologically Ooh. real. But I think you're um No. I think I think look, man. I, I uh, look, the I, people I, that I talk to, okay, don't don't delude themselves into thinking that they have changed their biological sex, right? They know that this is gender reassignment surgery. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. I, I, I think. Well, you know what? Thank you, caller. You blew my fucking mind. Wow. Amazing. All right. All right. Next thing then. Next thing then. You said there was a process, right? Do you want to know what some of the people, uh, what this process actually entails? Sure. Tell me about the process, caller. Educate me. Okay, some of these trannies on their own forums are talking about how it took less than a 30 minute consultation with some probably woman fucking psychoanalyst to get mm. first prescribed. How old on, were they? Fucking woman. Right? How old were they? Yeah. How old was who? The people that you're talking about who went to get this psychological, uh, whatever. You mean, you mean the process to be diagnosed with gender dysphoria or yeah. transgender? Okay, who in that process are you talking about? The people getting diagnosed. The, the supposed transgender person or yes. the person that's doing the diagnosis. The people they? getting their the people getting their balls chopped off. How old are they? Well, it's not balls chopped off. It's the very beginning uh, of the, the the process. And the first time I the, the point I looked to this, it was a fourteen year old. Okay. Thirty minutes of consultation. That person's on their way to transgenderism. Now, I have a question for you. Why do you think blocking puberty isn't a part of transitioning? Well, block puberty blockers were initially used for girls who went through puberty too early. Yeah. Okay, but why is that not part of transitioning? It doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be. Um, for other, so mean so yeah. So it doesn't have to be right. That's the thing. It's like uh, it like I, from what I understand, you start with puberty blockers, right? Um, for whenever the, until the person is over 18, but, um, uh, but if they decide to not go through with, uh, with transitioning, they can just, um, stop using the puberty blockers and go through puberty like any oh, other. Oh, and there's, kid. and there's, there's no long-term effects of using puberty blockers past well, the age. Well, I, I don't know. I don't know about that, but I hope not because we've been yeah, using our young, wait a minute, uh, uh, wait a minute. Shut up. I'm, so I'm still quick. finishing. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> so, so wait a minute. I, I don't know, but I would hope not because we've been using it on young girls since the nineties. So. <laughs> yeah. We hope not. Young girls in the nineties, you weren't using it until they were adults, right? No, you were using it when they were children, when they were like four and five, when they went through puberty too early, dude. Exactly. Can, can you like logic this for a second? Now we're doing it until they're 18. Right, but we're not starting them when they're four or five. Uh, yeah, we're starting, we're starting them, them when they're like 11 or 12. Puberties. All right, caller. Yeah, you're blocking their puberty. You're a fucking idiot. What? Am Sorry. I alone here? Yeah, uh, no. Yes, you're alone in your head. Go, no, go, no, go away. He, no, right. he's not. Go ahead. No, 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 when, you, when you screw around with someone's, someone's hormones at, at, at any age, that, like especially when they're in like that you know, biologically determined development arc, like, yeah, you're going to affect them down the line somehow. I mean, it's like, I don't know why. Yeah. The, like, is that, like, how is it? I mean, I mean now, now you could say you think it's good. It, it's, it's the lesser of, it's better than not doing it or it's the lesser of evils or I don't whatever. Know enough, okay, I don't, I don't but, know enough about it, but I know there are a lot like, of medications you know. that a lot of kids take that have a lot of side effects. Right. Well, let me put it. Okay. So I did like a like a thing. Well, I didn't do a thing. I just read research looking at the number of what, what is called um, standard practice. And basically about one third of all things, surgical like treatment procedures that have ever been standard practice have been dropped as being ineffective. So <laughs> like it's, it's like, you know, I'm so sure I understand at, 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 at any I'm saying at any point in history, a thing, a treatment protocol or a surgical procedure protocol, like a, a practice, like a kind of a medical project, about one in three of those are going, have historically in the past have turned out to be bunk, right? So, okay. well, we're going so go, so go, so going forward, just, just because something is standard practice, especially when there's something that seems to be kind of ideologically weighed in on like transgender and reassignment surgery and stuff like that um or puberty puberty blockers or trans the whole transgender smorgasbord um i'm guessing it's probably more than one in three that these things are going to be quote unquote found to be wrong we'll have to future. see well i mean look if there if there is a new treatment that comes out that's better then i'm sure there are going to be a lot of people who are for that 
Um, but I, I don't know enough about this to even comment on it. So, okay. Tom Pappert is here, by the way. Which is what I've been saying since the beginning. But, Vanguard News. What's up, man? Happy to be here. I, so I just want to add, I'm sorry to interrupt a debate that I wasn't invited to, but uh, I that, think that's a good point. I think that, you know, we had thalidomide babies because everybody thought thalidomide was a good thing. Uh, all the people with Agent Orange uh, poisoning, their kids are all messed up. We didn't anticipate that happening. We used to lobotomize people. Uh, we used to sterilize black women because we didn't want them to breed. Like medical science is fraught with horrifying things. And I think that people who are concerned about puberty blockers just think maybe that might be one of them in a few years who knows well maybe, agent, maybe agent, was agent orange wasn't a prescribed thing <laughs> no, it orange. was a side effect well then we didn't know that them being around agent orange was going to mess up the kids is my point okay yeah go ahead Sardis. you're going to say something real quick no i don't really have much to say i've already said like i don't know a whole lot about this topic i'm only i'm only giving you what i've heard from other people but you know yeah that's pretty much it what topic would you pick if you were picking the next topic? Uh, you pick you pick Ukraine. I was what? thinking that that, that mean because that's the debate tonight, Russia Ukraine. But um, if you want to pick another topic, that's fine too. Uh, let me uh, play some of these super chats real quick. Uh, Tom Pappert again. Introduce yourself. Plug your website, by the way. <laughs> Thanks for having me, Ralph. I'm Tom Pappert. You can find me at ValiantNews.com or on Cozy TV slash Valiant News and on all the social media. Just search Tom Pappert. Thanks again, Ralph. It's always fun to be on. You're welcome. Good to have you here. Mark's up in the in the top left there. Mark Collick, Killstream Hall of Famer. First ballot, no doubt. He's already thinking about, I can see he's thinking about Command and Conquer right now. Uh a hole, a -hole Anderson. Anderson sent three dollars. I'm playing commanding. <laughs> you don't prescribe diet pills to anorexics. You don't prescribe steroids to bodybuilding addicts. So why would you prescribe hormones to a man who thinks he's a woman? What do you say, Stardust? We're talking about uh, children, so it's puberty blockers, right? Yeah, we were. It was specifically geared towards children. Uh, the the topic for sure. Um, okay, now let's see. It'll start on its own, or do I have to press something? Uh, I'll just press it. Get on gab dot com. Send ten dollars. I e u Tom Pappert. We love you. L F G. Fire! 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 <laughs> fire! 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 All right. Now let's see. Okay. Anonymous sent three dollars. Stop interrupting a man. <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> Night driving Avenger sent three dollars. Stardust. This isn't hard. Someone can live outside of societal norms. There are consequences for that. Doesn't matter what outside of the societal norms takes on in their situation. What we oppose is children being encouraged to do this. No, the monkey of no, Minneapolis sent George, three dollars. That, that's Ubabuga. not appropriate. Dad Brown Shaboon is almost as stupid as me when I'm deep into George, my eleventh inning. Come thing on, she's not, a, she's not African. Shaboon means African. Okay. No right, dice right. sent three dollars. Men know how to be better women. Oh, what's, than the, what's the term for me, Ryan? <laughs> no, she can cook. <laughs> that bitch is fat. Is something something to do with sand or something. Star's child <sighs> sent three dollars. Mommy, but, but Shaboon dad. means African. There are only okay, two something genders. Something to do with sand. Okay. You and my teacher lie to me. Now the other girls. I can't. Can sorry, I can't think of something. I and I don't know how I'm going to. Mark do knows. Life is already hard enough. <laughs> does, Mark, does Mark have a good one? Mark, do you have a good word for it for for people like me? <sighs> She's just not that's legal to say in the UK. <laughs> it's not legal. Wow, you guys really don't have freedom of speech there. Good God. Oh, we love her. I would if I could think of one, but I can't think of one. You can't think sorry. of one. I'm, so, I'm sorry. I'm oh, sorry. No. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm sorry. See, uh, I miss. I hope I, one of those probably got cut. But let's try to. Please don't let them say that. Oh, I'm not an expert. Sent three dollars. Vincent James isn't an expert in the matter, but knows the basics. Boy, Mark, will you debate the subject? Boy, Star Dot, will you debate the moon landing? No. Have you been dick slapped? Oh, I can kind of. <laughs> what no. in the fuck? Answers oh, no. I, I didn't. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Pegminko sent three dollars. Hi, Ralph. It's your old pal Pegminko. Yes! I just want to let you know that you stink and I hate you. No. And I you. Oh, you. What did I do wrong? Please let me come, come back. On okay, back. I have to go practice my creeper stare by Ralph. Oh, come on. We'll, we can have you back. Come on. 
Supernova sent three dollars. Star, this is your mother. Stop talking to these mentally ill friends <laughs> and, which, and come home. That's I met a nice man your age who cashiers at a seven hundred eleven. So you know, it's almost, it's almost like if, if my, if it were my mom, she would have said like first three, three words. Stop talking. Stop talking to people on Switch. And I just also stop, there. stop talking to people on Cozy. Back to India. <laughs> Stop talking to these people. Yeah. I want to be around the world. Oh. They are so cute with their blue eyes. Thank you. All right, anonymous. anonymous sent ten dollars. My baby brother is autistic and thinks he's a girl now. He found out after he went to therapy. No oh, one can God. say anything because my mom is scared he'll kill himself. That's fucked. The entire trans kids thing is predatory. That's actually pretty fucked. Um, well, yeah, the, and again, and the reason I brought this up is I saw this thread the other day where it's teachers on Reddit and they're talking about cracking kids and talking to them where their parents don't hear, you know what I mean? Don't see them. And this is a kid that I think should be a trans or is on the precipice of, and to me, it's like picking and choosing Boogly and indoctrination. $3 anyway. Miss Dust, if your child claimed they were a dog, you would start feeding them dog food and let them sleep in a dog house, correct? No, I wouldn't, you know, but I'd probably seek whatever medical treatments available for them. I, I mean, if they're like a little kid, like I'll let them pretend to be a dog for a little while or something. Yeah, maybe if they're a little them. kid, but I probably wouldn't give them dog food. Yeah, so. <laughs> maybe give it to them once and then they go, ew. And that'd be it. All right, now let's say don't give your kids dog food. All right, now. <laughs> A dull wolf sent three dollars stardust is a haughty smile. Ralph can vouch for me. I'm a good guy. DM wow. me sometime. Wow. Also, Mark is the goat. Like Ronaldo, he's inevitable. So who are you? <laughs> Mike Scorper Germany sent three dollars question for Mark. You have been courting. Very politely, I might add. The friendship of Grow Ipers with basically no return. What I gathered is that they see you as a witness. Do you want to dispel this notion? Personally, I am a huge fan. What do you say, Mark? Uh oh, he's gonna unmute himself. No, I'm gonna unmute myself, man. I was just uh, I'm not I'm not admitting to what game I'm playing, but I may have been playing a computer game for the last 14 minutes. <laughs> so <laughs> it isn't actually Command and Conquer. No, look, I give credit where credit's due, and I also give criticism where criticism's due. I say it as I see it. I call things out. And as far as I'm concerned, if people are doing good work, then I would be a fool to say they're not doing good work because what would I gain from that? And if people are doing something that is good, as a nationalist, I don't want to hold that back in any way. One thing that always bothers me about the, we'll call it the wider nationalist movement or the nationalist diaspora, is that as a group, there are so many people who have disagreements or ideological differences with others in the group. And rather than putting them to one side and working for the greater good at the best or at the worst, saying, well, I don't really agree with you, but I'm going to stand back and let you get on with what you're doing because you're doing a good job and you're reaching out to lots of people. These people who have these differences do everything they can to prevent the group or the person that they have this minor disagreement with getting any further or becoming anything more and actively try to sabotage them. And I don't see that as a good or righteous way to behave because it holds back the wider movement. So I'm not saying I agree with Nick Fuentes on everything. I'm not saying that Nick Fuentes would agree with me on everything, but I see what he is doing is gainful. I see him taking the movement to new heights in certain ways. And I see him reaching out to lots of normal younger people that say people like myself haven't reached. So why would I then childishly seek to attack the America First movement and tear it down. What would I gain from that? What would the wider movement gain from that? What would be the net result of that? Well, it would all be negatives. And I don't want to be that negative person. And I think a lot of people that do attack Nick are people who are probably jealous of him, probably bitter that he's achieved more that they that they have and i think these are very very bad motivations to go after someone 
All right, now let's see. Let me turn this back on here. Uh, okay, we got that question in. Can I carry on playing computer games now? Will? You can turn it back on until the next question. You can put yourself on mute. Let's see. Player one sent five dollars. The amount of patricide and matricide as a result of this tranny kid agenda we are going to witness in a few years will be shocking, but not surprising. Virginian sent three dollars to address the last super chatter about the tranny thing. Screw the legal repercussions. Just sit down with them and talk to them and tell them they're being groomed and abused. That's all you can do, brother. Yeah, that was a tough one, actually. That super chat. Good friend sent five dollars. Hello, good afternoon, kindly Miss Stardust. Kindly Miss, please answer my question. How do you explain that Gen Z is four percent trans? What is truly causing this unexpected rise in your worldview? What do you say to that? Um, maybe, maybe it was always like that percentage, but people, I don't know, killed themselves before they could. I don't know. I have no idea. All right. That's no. the microplastics. It would just, it would just all be speculation, to be honest, if you were asking me. So Yeah, the, the whole <laughs> world was always this messed up, <laughs> but all the trannies just disappeared because the magical tranny witch appeared in the night and whisked them away and put them in a big blender You're where they were never seen You're putting words in my again. mouth. I never said anything. I, yeah, I'm not putting anything in your mouth, I can tell you that now. <laughs> Do you she think said, that it... That it could be uh, like a trend where young people, it's cool to be bi or gay or trans now. Sure, Real question, maybe, not trying to be Maybe mean. there are some. Maybe there are some people who are doing it as part of a fad. Okay. Right. Trans is, kind of, is a pretty big commitment, though. I mean, there's people who will, I mean, it's not like saying I'm bi, you know. But for <laughs> these the, kids, they, I mean, I. this is all anecdotal, I'll admit, but I, I know people where they had a trans nephew and then I, six months later, he was over it. And thank goodness he didn't go on puberty blockers or any drugs that could have messed with them. He was just wearing dresses or whatever. So, I, you know, sometimes I think kids grow out of it. In fact, I think there's been studies that show the overwhelming majority grow out of it. Reich Scrooge Germany sent oh. three dollars. Thank you for your answer, Mark. Oh. It's a shame that the divide between NJP and AF is so big, considering that the actual divide was between Spencerists and AF. Well, I follow the word of our leader, Nick Fuentes. He says what goes, and he has the vision. All right, go ahead, Mark. Follow up with what no, you. I was going to say. Um, Tom made a very good point there. But when I was a young guy, uh, maybe about fourteen or fifteen. Everyone went through this phase at my school of wanting to be noticed by wearing, and now some of you people will be too young to know these groups, but at the time, the big, the big heavy bands, the really heavy bands that everyone loved were Pantera, who had a very famous album called Vulgar Display of Power, and another b band called Machine Head, who did a very heavy classic song called Davidian. And... People wore these black long sleeve T-shirts with either a Pantera um, logo or, you know, drawing picture on the front and the back, or they wore a machine head one. This lasted for about six months and it was the coolest thing to do. Teachers didn't like it. They would grow their hair down to about here. They'd have an undercut and they would wear these T-shirts with jeans and usually Doc Martin or some sort of military style boots. And as I said, this lasted about six months. Then anyone after that six months still wearing their Pantera or Machine Head t-shirt was then sad, uncool, not one of the in crowd because people had moved on. And what a lot of this transgenderism, this bisexual, this homosexual thing seems to be is people jumping on the bandwagon because all of these big companies, you know, your sort of Disney, your media influencers, your social media influencers, these freaks who've got these giant YouTube channels that everyone's told are super cool, are all pushing this madness as the new cool norm. Whereas when I said when I was a kid, it was a lot more um, innocent. It was just wearing a T-shirt with the latest cool band on. Now it's changing your gender. And this obviously has much, much further reaching effects on society and much more damaging effects on the individual. Because unlike your Pantera t-shirt, you can't take it off, get your mum to wash it and put it in the closet. Once, you know, your bits have been chopped off or mutilated, that's it, game over. You're basically the equivalent of the guy who super glued himself into his Pantera t-shirt. Big mistake. <laughs> right, but the thing is, that it's... It 
this is lasting longer than other fads. It's it's like lasting gen like generations and is and is creeping up be between the generations, which uh, well, again, well, Mark is talking again, about it. Again, again goes metal. again. Right. Well, I'm I'm saying this suggests something more physiological going. Well, does it? Because when I was a kid, we were way past what Mark was talking, and I'm not that much younger, but you know, a few years go by, and it was uh, Fallout Boy and Emo. Everybody went to Hot Topic to dress like an emo, and uh, then a couple years after that, like when I went from middle school to high school, it was getting those retarded holes in your ears. Oh, and it cages. The gauges, yeah, and if they're small enough, they'll heal back up. So most of the you know white girls whose parents kind of a large jump to, to jump from Hot Topic though to like gender identities right right and it's not going away and it's and it's going up 10 20 years like it's it, 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 this is not like well i, I don't think it's been four percent for 20 years we're talking like this all started no, in 2014 no, I'm, saying, I'm saying it's it's going up. it's going up though but the thing is the rise in 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 like by bi homosexuality and then bisexuality then transsexuality has been going up stepwise before 2014 and it's only until more recently that you've now now look i'm not saying that the sort of environmental promotion of it hasn't had an effect but it has to promote i think something that's actually there which is something physiological maybe microplastics i don't know but something's but we know that testosterone is has been cratering now again I know that people who transition don't have particularly low testosterone per se, but I think the low testosterone is evidence that something hormonally is happening. So I, that's well, that's an interesting idea. You might be totally right. There might be, maybe it's natural human evolution. I doubt it. Maybe it's oh, I doubt plastics. That. Maybe it's all the McDonald's we eat. Who knows? But if that's what's wrong, then I would say we should be devoting. And you're right about the testosterone. Handshakes are nothing nowadays. I shake hands with like old men and they'll break my wrist. <laughs> uh, it's, it's pathetic. <laughs> and so, uh, but to me, medical science, we should be putting all funding into figuring out what that is and reversing it. So we can all be men and women again instead of saying well we're all sick with something we don't know what it is let's cut off our tits and dicks. yeah the, the problem the problem is well that's well first off i think there's an ideological problem obviously and we don't have to we agree on, we know what the, i mean by that but i think there's also another basic problem which is so much medical science is based on curing acute acute things it's like finding what people Right. And dealing with the things as it comes about, as opposed to prevention, which is why anti anti aging research has taken so long to finally get like seriously worked on <laughs> as a as related thing. All right. Now, let me uh, hit these again. Gersh. Gersh sent three dollars. Mark is a nice and cozy guy. Mark, call it on cozy when. Just a lot. Line Rider sent three dollars. Who do you guys think is going to the deeper circle in hell? The tranny or the one who ruined a kid's life and made them a tranny? Oh, obviously the one who made him a tranny. We didn't want him. Yeah, it's yeah. the same as like abortion doctors versus the mom. The mom you can kind of forgive. Somebody who makes that their job, they're messed up in the head. 1500 people watching live right now the supreme panel on the kill stream super show counterpoints versus nick fuentes coming to you live tonight 9 p.m eastern let's continue with the uh march through the institutions aka the super chats go ahead <laughs> the undertaker the long march tom papert looks like a young paul bearer excellent show ralph <laughs> we are only getting started let's fucking go I'm just happy to be called young. Albert, oh, the clock on my oh, embalming room wall is ticking down. <laughs> Only three weeks away to WrestleMania. It's coming. Oh, yes. There'll be a funeral in Stone Mountain, Georgia. Thank you, Albert. <laughs> Puberty Blocker sent $3 Dusty Star. You are making terrible excuses for a mental disease that needs real treatment. You clearly have no life experience. <laughs> you have nothing to live for. You're useless. I hope you crawl wow. back into your and reflect wow. on your choices. Do you have... This person is projecting. <laughs> that's that's kind of rough. So. It always starts out with some valid criticism, and I'm not. And, but no, I disagree with the entire second half of that. Oh, no. 
Yeah. Anonymous sent $10 in response to the other chatter. I talked to him a few times about people lying to one another and not to trust everyone. Last year he went to meet up with someone he met on Discord. I think the only reason he's alive is because my mom was with him. Fuck. Uncle Scrooge sent $5 mark, Inophysis AP, which is Pantera, and which is Machine Head. Fuck. Fox King and Gang sent $3 poop, dust, poop, dust, poop, dust. All right. Did you want to answer that, Mark? Who's Pantera and who's... I, I'm not really sure, actually. One thing I will say is I was never actually one of the cool kids because I had one of the lot, the black long sleeve T-shirts, but mine was a Guns N' Roses one. But by then, a lot of the kids didn't like Guns N' Roses. But I had made my choice. I liked my band and I was sticking with it. And I will say this. I think in the grand scheme of things, Guns N' Roses have proved themselves to have more staying power than either Machine Head or Pantera in the, in the grand scheme of things. I'm not saying Machine Head and Pantera are awful, but uh, Guns N' Roses were my choice, still are, always going to be my favourite band. Hey, no, let's uh, start pretty good. Gib Gord sent $3. We know historically sexuality is highly malleable. The Spartans were gay because gay sex was encouraged to develop bonds between soldiers. When they married, they had to shave women's hair, oh, dress shit, in I'll men's clothes, and have sex in the dark with a girl. Uh, That's probably overstated. <laughs> <laughs> also, also they, they had sex with boys before they went through puberty. So, it was... Yeah, there was a weird pederast thing where they, the, they, they were like Muslims. They don't like the boys after like age 10. All right. No. Oh, okay. Now <laughs> let's uh, let's take is there another <laughs> Lovecraft pilled sent three dollars stardust looking fire tonight. Oh, thank you. All right. Now <laughs> should we take a caller? Let's take a caller. Um, let's see. I probably have to get going soon. Um, so. Okay, that's cool. Uh, do you want to plug your channel? By the way, I know you do this the panel on Sundays. Oh wait, hold on. Billy Berenberg sent three dollars. Multiculturalism, ethnic diversity, open uh, borders. These are the wishes of the street shitter and international world jury. <laughs> right, I've never you. said open borders, but okay. Um, Go ahead. What, wait, 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 real quick. What are your views on on borders? If you just real uh, quick. Since so, I mean, up. like, I mean, open borders is not something we can do right now. Um, uh, and I think I think right now, um, <laughs> we're doing. not not even well, not even like we can do probably any time in the near future. Um, like open borders is just, yeah, everybody, anybody. Right? <laughs> it's what so. we're doing. I don't think it's, it, it, but it is, uh, but it is what we are doing. <laughs> what, what what's your doing. like, what, what would your preferred scenario be? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I think okay. we, uh, we should probably like, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I have to, th I have to read more on it. So yeah. I'm just, oh, I'm just gonna say that much. Do, do, yeah, do, you ever think, that. do you ever think the sort of, there always seems to be this kind of, I think out of all the sort of liberal types I've spoken to, you seem to argue in good faith a lot more than most. So I, it, I don't dislike but I will say this. Well, if you come down streets like this. <laughs> yeah, and you are quite reasonable. You come on, you have you know more sort of genuine discussions. But I do always find uh, people like yourself, you, 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 I, it's almost like I can see you have a natural instinct to say, yeah, open borders is, a, is, is just a silly idea. But you have to say, mm, no, no, I need to read more about it first. Because really... Well, no, I mean, open borders just sounds moronic to me. Like, if you're going to ask me, like, yeah, I would say open borders just sounds like... Your natural instinct would be to say, yeah. Would be absolutely, be yeah, like, moronic. And I think I've talked to a lot of liberals, actually, who feel the same way. But I'm not going to speak on, like, actual immigration policy when I feel like I haven't read up enough on it. Um, I, I'm just not one of those people. I don't talk out of my ass. Um, it's not something I'm going to do. Like, I preface with the transgender uh, discussion. Um I, I'm 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 purely speaking on what I know, and I don't know a lot. So, all right, uh, plug your channel, plug your show on Sundays. Yeah, uh, I'm Stardust. You can find me on Twitch and on YouTube. And on Sundays, we do Supernova, where we uh, do a debate panel, and usually something crazy happens. So you should come check it out. <laughs> <laughs> a couple times when something crazy happens, for sure. Uh, thank you for coming on. Thank you for uh, spending quite some time here. Mm -hmm. on thank the you for having me. I always uh, uh, appreciate you inviting me on. So 
very much. 100%. We'll have you back for sure. Stardust. Thank you. Have a good weekend. Mm -hmm. You too. Bye.